Act One of Electra by Benito Perez Galdós, translated by Charles Alfred Tyrrell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Electra, a drama in five acts, by Benito Perez Galdós, played for the first time in the Teatro Español of Madrid, January the thirteenth, nineteen o one persons electra read by amanda friday evarista read by sarah terry maximo read by k hand don salvador pantoja read by negatron the marquis of ronda read by todd don urbano garcia uste read by felschampf mariano read by eden ray hedrick Heel a mathematician read by avai balbina read by ethelbus patros a young servant read by c j plog jose an old man servant read by omwan dutre sister dorothea read by beth thomas a workman read by david olson the shade of eleutheria read by mary Kay stage directions read by rapunzelina the action takes place in madrid in the present electra act one hall luxuriously furnished in the mansion of the garcia eustace at the right a passageway to the garden at the back communication with the other rooms of the building at the right in front entrance to the room of electra scene one marquis Jose at the back. Jose. They are in the garden. I'll take them ward. Marquis. Wait. I want to look around the room. I haven't visited the Garcia Yos since they have been in their new house. What luxury! They are doing well. God gives them enough for everything, and this is nothing in comparison with what they give to charity always so generous yes indeed sir and always so unassuming but there is in the family i believe an interesting novelty novelty oh yes you mean listen jose will you do what i ask you the marquis knows that i shall never forget the fourteen years that i was in his service command your excellency well then Today I have come solely for the purpose of making the acquaintance of this young lady that your master and mistress brought recently from a school in France. Miss Electra. Can you tell me whether her uncle and aunt are pleased with her? Whether the girl shows herself affectionate, grateful? Oh, yes, they love her, but... What? The girl is a little mischievous. At her age playful very playful sir she is very pretty as they say an angel an angel yes if there are angels very similar to demons she drives us all crazy how i want to know her your excellency may find her in the garden she passes the whole morning there throwing things about and playing pranks marquis looking into the garden pretty garden more like a park the old forest of the ancient palace of haravalinas yes sir that magnificent house next door doesn't that belong to your master too with an entrance from the garden and also from the street on the ground floor the nephew of my master and mistress, Mr. Maximo, has his laboratory. He is the first mathematician of Spain, and in... in... Yes, he whom they call the Wonderful Magician. I knew him in London. I don't remember just when. Is his wife living yet? The poor fellow was left a widower in February of last year. 
he has two beautiful children not long ago i renewed my acquaintance with maximo and though i do not frequent his house for reasons of my own we are great friends the best friends in the world i am very fond of him too he is so good and tell me now aren't your master and mistress sorry they brought this little demon here jose fearing that someone is coming i shall tell your excellency i have noticed sees don urbano coming from the garden my master is coming you may go scene two marquis don urbano marquis embracing him my dear urbano don urbano marquis how glad i am to see you and evarista well and wondering at the absence of the illustrious marquis of rona oh you don't know what a winter we have passed and virginia she is not well the poor girl always struggling with her attacks she lives by main strength stubbornness i say of her strong will well well so pointing to the garden shall we go down pretty soon let me rest a moment he sits down tell me dear urbano about this charming girl this electra whom you have just brought from school she wasn't still in school she was living in hendaye with some relatives of her mother i never was in favor of bringing her to live with us but avarista took the idea into her head some time ago her only object is to test the character of the child to see if we can make out of her a good woman or if god reserves for us the shame that she should inherit the evil habits of her mother you know she was the first cousin of my wife and i need not repeat to you the excesses of eleutheria between the years eighty and eighty-five of course not of course not they were such that the family grieved and mortified broke off all relations with her this child whose father is not known grew up with her mother until she was five years old then they took her to the convent of the Ursulinas at Bayonne. There, either for short or to embellish the name, they insisted on calling her Electra, which is quite a novelty. Pardon me, not really a novelty, for her intimates called the unhappy mother, Lutiria Diaz, Electra, not only for short, but also because they gave the name of Agamemnon to her father, who was a very valiant soldier very unhappy in his married life i didn't know i never had anything to do with those people eleutheria on account of her reputation for wildness was pictured to me as a very repugnant person good heavens my dear robano don't be too severe remember that eleutheria whom we shall call electra one changed her life it must have been about the year eighty eight about that time her repentance made considerable talk she died in san jose de la penitencia in 1895 reformed and hating her past marquis as if blaming him for his severity god pardoned her yes yes pardon i forget and you now are testing electra too to see if she will turn out crooked or straight and what has been the result of your tests results rather doubtful contradictory varying each day every hour there are moments in which the child shows admirable qualities badly concealed beneath her innocence moments in which she seems the most crazy creature that god ever put into the world at the very same time she charms you with her angelical candor she frightens you with her diabolical smartness which she gets from her own innocence an excess of imagination perhaps lack of balance is she lively as lively as electricity itself mysterious so abrupt that she frightens you she tears up things turns them upside down but brightens them up marquis rising i am burning with curiosity let us go and see her scene three marquis don urbano cuesta at the back cuesta enters with appearance of fatigue 
takes out his portfolio of papers and turns to the table marquis and how are you all here hello old cuesta what has our untiring agent to tell us cuesta sitting down seems to have an affection of the heart the untiring one alas is tired now well what can you tell us of the rise yesterday in the amalgamated stock it came from paris at two points did you make our settlement and mine i am coming to that takes out some papers from his portfolio and writes you shall have the exact figures right away i got the very best possible from the exchange of course the par value of the new shares being seventy nine point five o we having picked up the paper at a very low price of course of course the result has been splendid the ease with which we become rich my dear robano kindles in us the love of life and the enthusiasm for human beauty let's go into the garden don urbano to cuesta are you coming i shall need ten minutes to arrange my notes then we'll leave you alone do you wish anything cuesta buried in his notes no a yes a glass of water i am burning up in a minute goes out with the marquis into the garden scene four cuesta patros cuesta correcting his notes ah yes there was an error to the eustes there are due one million seven hundred thousand pesetas to the marquis of ronda two hundred twenty two thousand we must discount the twelve thousand odd equal to nine thousand francs enter patros with glasses of water sugar cognac she waits a moment until cuesta finishes his calculation shall i leave it here don leonardo put it down and wait a minute one million eight hundred with the seven hundred ten make it's plain now good good all right petros puts his hand in his pocket takes out some money and gives it to her thank you sir that's the way i tell you that i expect a favour from you command me don leonardo well fingering the sugar cone you see aren't you going to put in any cognac if you've come in warm the water alone may hurt you yes a little but i wish don't misunderstand me i should like to speak a moment alone with miss electra knowing me as you do you will understand that my object is the best and most honourable i say this to remove any scruples you may have gathers up his papers before any one comes tell me what time and place would be the most appropriate to say a few words to miss electra thinking it would probably be when my master and mistress are busy with the lawyer i shall be on the lookout if it could be to-day so much the better will you be back soon i shall be back and you can let me know quietly yes yes you may be sure i will gathers up the service and retires scene five cuesta pantoja dressed entirely in black enters meditating and absorbed in thought friend pantoja may god be with you are you well pantoja sighs oh still living my friend that is to say hoping hoping for a better life suffering in this one all the lord wills in order to be worthy of the other and your health so so bad because troubles and disease afflict me good because pain gratifies me and suffering makes me rejoice uneasy and as if dominated by a fixed idea looking towards the garden you are an aesthetic oh that crazy girl see her running with the porter's boys with the children of maximo and the others of the neighbourhood when they let her break loose in childish pranks this electra is in her glory beautiful doll may it please god to make of her a woman of merit an angel could come out of the graceful doll of the fickle girl more easily than it could of the woman i don't understand you friend pantera i do look look how they are playing alarmed heaven help me whom do i see there is that the marquis of ronda his very self 
that corrupt corrupter, the Don Juan of the past generation. He has decided not to retire in order not to disappoint Satan. In order that it may be said, once more, that there is no paradise without its serpent. No, no. A serpent we had already. Nervous and fretful, he walks up and down the stage. Another thing. Haven't you heard about the million I am bringing them? Pantoja, without paying much attention to the matter, fixed on another idea which is not manifest. Yes, I know. Yes. We gained a lot. And you will give larger sums to San Jose de la Penitencia. Yes. Repeating a fixed idea. We had a serpent already. Aloud. What were you saying to me, friend Cuesta? That. I beg your pardon. Is it a fact that our neighbor next door, our wonderful sage, inventor, and almost miracle worker, is thinking of changing his residence? Who? Maximo? I think so. It seems that in Bilbao and in Barcelona they welcome with enthusiasm his wonderful studies of new applications of electricity, and they offer him all the capital he needs to develop these discoveries. Pantoja meditating. Oh, capital. Within my means, I would give it to him, provided he... Scene 6 Pantoja, Cuesta, Evarista, Don Urbano, the Marquis, who come in from the garden. Evarista, releasing the arm of the Marquis. Ah, congratulations, Cuesta. Pantoja, how glad I am to see you today. Cuesta and Pantoja bow and kiss her hand respectfully. She sits down at the right, the Marquis standing at her side. The other three form a group at the left, talking business. Marquis resuming with Evarista an interrupted conversation. In this way you will pass not only into history, but into the lives of the saints. <laughs> Marquis, don't praise that which is absolutely lacking in merit we have no children god gave us greater and greater wealth each year a new inheritance came to us without troubling ourselves in the least nor scheming in any way the margin of our income managed in clever operations by our friend cuesta has brought us more wealth without our knowing it we bought a country place and that very year the rise in produce tripled its value we acquired a piece of barren land and found that it is an immense storehouse of coal of iron of lead what does that mean marquis it means my dear friend that when god heaps so many riches on one who does not desire them nor esteem them it means very clearly that he does so that they may be used to his service exactly and interpreting it in the same way i hasten to fulfil the divine will that which cuesta brings me to-day will merely pass through my hands and with this i shall have given to the patrocinio seven whole millions and i shall do even more in order that the establishment and school in madrid may have all the decorations and magnificence that is fitting to so great an institution we shall stimulate the work of the schools in valencia and cadiz Pantoja passing the group on the right. Without forgetting, my friend, the institution for higher instruction, which is to be a sanctuary of true science. <laughs> my friend Pantoja knows very well that I never cease thinking of it. Don Urbano passing also to the right. We are thinking of it night and day. Fine, fine. Rises. Evarista to Cuesta, who also passes to the right. Ah, oh, and uh, now, Leonardo, what are we going to do? Cuesta, sitting down by the side of Avarista, proposes to her new transactions. We shall limit ourselves to carrying over some sums. Pantoja, standing at the left of Avarista. Or with premiums. Marquis, passing across the stage with Don Urbano. Allow me to ask, my dear Urbano, that proclaiming the merits of your wife you do not forget mine, ours. I speak for my wife and myself. Virginia has already given to Las Enclavas the half of our fortune. One of the most important in Andalusia. And in our wills we leave them all, 
except a portion which we have destined to fulfill certain obligations and for poor relations. Very good. But as I understood a few years ago, you were not so well satisfied with Virginia's generous piety. That's true. But in the end I learned the catechism. I am in it body and soul. She has converted me, has regenerated me. As my avarista has done me. To preserve peace in the family, I began by temporizing, by yielding, and yielding and temporizing I have come to this point. It doesn't worry me, no. Today I live in a beatific peace, cured of my old manias. I have come to believe that Virginia will not only save her own soul, but mine, too. The same with me, that she will save me. It is certain that we have the initiative in nothing. In nothing, my dear Marquis. Why, sometimes even breathing is forbidden us. Even breathing forbidden? But we live in tranquility. We serve God without any effort. Our blessed wives precede us along the road to a blessed eternity. Have no fear that they will leave us behind. Of course not. Urbano. Don Urbano, hastening to her. What? Put yourself at the disposal of Cuesta for the settlement and to give over to the fathers. This very day. Cuesta rises. <laughs> Another thing. Go down a moment and tell Electra that she has played three hours now. Pantoja, in a commanding tone. Tell her to come up. She has frisked about too much already. I am going. Seeing Electra coming. Here she is now. Scene 7. The same. Electra. After her, Maximo. Electra enters running and laughing, followed by Maximo, whom she is out distancing. Her laughter is that of childish fear. Don't you catch me? Brute, I'll show you. Maximo carries in one hand various objects which will be indicated, in the other a large branch of poplar which he handles like a whip. Rogue, if I catch you. Electra, without noticing the others on the stage, runs around with childlike agility and takes refuge in the skirts of Doña Evarista, kneeling at her feet and throwing her arms around her waist. I am safe. Aunt, tell him to go away. Where is the crazy girl? With jesting threats. Ah, she knows where to go. Uh, why, girl, when will you learn gravity? Maximo, you are as much a child as she. Maximo, showing what he is carrying. Look what she has done for me. She broke these two test tubes. And then, see these papers on which I had calculations that represent enormous work. Shows the papers holding them up. This one she made a bird of. That one she gave to the children to paint donkeys and elephants on. And an ironclad firing at a castle. Why did she go into the laboratory? And she spoiled my discipline of the children and turned everything upside down. Pantoja with severity. But, my dear young lady. Electra. Blessed childhood. With enthusiasm. Electra, you big child. Blessed be your pranks. Keep as long as you can your precious gaiety. I didn't break the cylinders. It was Pepito. The paper's full of scratches. I did take them, thinking they were of no use. Come, let's make peace. Peace. To Electra. All right, I'll spare your life. I'll excuse you this time. Here. Gives her the switch. Electra takes it whipping him severely this for what you have said to me whipping him with force this for what you didn't say why what didn't i say gravity reason what have i told you truths that will be very useful to her that she should learn for herself many things that she doesn't know that she should open wide her eyes and cast them over human life to see that all is not gaiety that there are also duties sorrows sacrifices Heavens, how it frightens me! All surround her in the center of the stage, except Pantoja, who hastens to the side of Evarista. It is best not to stimulate her pranks by applause. And to show her a little of severity. 
No one can outdo me in severity. Isn't it true, girl, that I am very severe and that you thank me for it? Say that you thank me for it. Electra whipping him lightly. Wise accuser, if this were a real whip, I should whip you with greater pleasure. Maximo smiling and amused. Charming one. Whip me, Electra. Electra whipping him with gentleness. You, no, for I haven't confidence. A little, no more. So. Whipping the others. And you. And you. A little. Why don't you go and play the piano for these gentlemen? Why, she doesn't study a note. Her indolence is as great as her aptitude for all the arts. Let her show us her watercolors and drawings. Come and see, Marquis. They all group themselves around the table, except Avarista and Pantoja, who talk aside. Why, yes. Looking for her sketch-book among the books and papers that are on the table. You will see I am a great artist. Praise yourself, chatterbox. Electra untying the ribbon of her sketch-book. You run me down, I'll brag. We'll see who comes out the better. Oh! Showing some drawings. You are astonished. What do you say to these magnificent sketches of landscapes, of animals that look like people, of people that look like animals? All are amazed, looking at the drawings which pass from hand to hand. Evarista, leaving the central group, begins a conversation with Pantoja. <sighs> you are right, Salvador. You always are, and now in the case of Electra, your reasoning is like a splendid orb of light which puts us all in the shade. This light which you think intelligence is not. It is only the brightness of an intense fire that burns within. Will. By this force which I owe to God, I have been able to mend my error. After the confidences which you made to me last night, I see more clearly your right to intervene in the education of this crazy head. To indicate the way for her, to point out her high ends. A right which implies inexcusable duties. Oh, how glad I am that you recognize it, my dear friend. I feared that my confidence of last night, a dark story which blackens the best years of my life, would make me lose your esteem. No. <laughs> My friend, no. As a man, you have been subject to human weaknesses. But the sinner has been regenerated, punishing himself with the mortification that repentance brings, and strengthening it in the practice of virtue. Sadness, love of solitude, contempt for vanities were my salvation. Well, my reparation would not be complete if I did not take care to direct this girl, to keep her from harm. If we lack care, it would be easy for her to go the way of her mother. My opinion is that you should talk to her. Alone. That's what I think. Alone. Give her to understand, in a delicate way, the authority you have over her. Yes. Yes, that is my wish. Continues in a low voice. Electra in the central group, quarreling with Maximo. Stop! Stop! What do you know? Showing a drawing. This brute says that the bird looks like a pensive old man, and the woman like a pale lobster. Oh, no! This is very good! Sometimes, when she takes the least care, she gets wonderful results. The truth is that this landscape, with the distant sea and these trunks... My specialty. Don't you know what it is? Well, old trunks, walls, and ruins. I paint well what I don't know sadness the past death present gaiety youth i can't do them with sorrow i am a great artist for all that i have not experienced what grace how bright it charms me to hear her soon reflection will come responsibilities electra making fun of maximo reason seriousness look at the sage gloomy I shall have all this whenever I like, and more than you. We shall see, we shall see. Pantoja, who has been listening to the group. I can't hide from you that I do not like the familiarity of the girl with the nephew of Urbano. We shall correct that. But bear in mind that Maximo is an honorable man, sensible. Yes, yes, but my friend, 
in the paths of confidence the strongest stumble and fall a sad experience has taught me that electra in the central group i shall settle down when it suits me nobody should become serious until god commands no one should say alas alas until sorrow comes that's so and then one learns practical things of course when god comes and says to me child here is sorrow suffering doubt he will say it and soon electra my daughter don't be silly aunt it is maximo who goes to her aunt's side maximo is right certainly cuesta and don urbano also go to the side of evarista leaving maximo and the marquis alone at the left may i know marquis the result of your first observations the girl has charmed me i see there is no exaggeration in what you told me and doesn't your penetration discover underneath these jests something that i understand moral beauty common sense i haven't had time yet for such discoveries i shall continue my observations because i to tell the truth consecrated to science at an early age know very little of the world and human characters are for me a writing that i can scarcely decipher well in this writing and in others i know how to read fluently will you come to my house for a while it is possible that my wife may scold me if she knows that i have visited the laboratory of electricity and the manufactory of light but virginia will not be very severe i may venture afterwards i shall return here under pretext of seeing the girl at the piano i shall talk to her and continue my studies maximo aloud are you coming marquis you are leaving us i am going with my friend for a while marquis i am much vexed at your long absence much vexed you cannot make amends better than by lunching with us to-day it is a punishment don juan it is penitence i accept as atonement for my guilt and i bless the hand that punishes me you maximo will you come too if they leave me free at that hour i shall come don't come for heaven's sake don't come with a joy that she cannot hide you are going to come say yes correcting herself no no say no oh you can't get rid of me crazy girl you will come to your senses perhaps and you will lose yours foolish sage old electra follows him with her glances until he leaves maximo and the marquis go out through the garden jose enters at the back scene eight electra avarista don urbano pantoja cuesta jose jose announcing the mother superior of san jose de la penitentiaire oh my good sister barbara de la cruz uh, let her come in here getting up uh, no in the salon come what a fortunate opportunity so i shall not have to go to the convent girl go to your studies indicating the next room cuesta taking leave i am going i shall come back presently good-bye cuesta aside to electra will they leave you alone pantoja hastening to electra cultivate with care electra this sublime art consecrate all your talent to the great bach in order that you may assimilate the religious style all leave except electra scene nine electra presently cuesta electra humming a church psalm gathers up her drawings and arranges them bach in order that i may assimilate how fine the religious style sings cuesta enters at the back concealing himself alone electra sings some liturgical notes sees cuesta why didn't you go don leonardo cuesta timidly yes but i came back my daughter i want to talk with you electra a little frightened with me the matter is a delicate one very delicate with fatigue breathing with difficulty pardon me i suffer from my heart i cannot stand electra hands him a chair he sits down 
Yes, the matter is such a delicate one that I do not know where to begin. Goodness, what is it? Questa becoming animated. Electra, I knew your mother. Ah, my mother was very unhappy. What do you mean by unhappy? Why, she lived among bad people who would not let her be as good as she wished. Oh, without knowing it, you have told a great truth. Do you remember your mother? Do you think of her? My mother is for me a vague memory, but a sweet one, an image that never leaves me. I keep her alive in my heart, for she is still only a great memory, and in this memory my eyes are always seeking anxiously to see her. My poor mother. Raises her handkerchief to her eyes, Questa sighs. Tell me, Don Leonardo, when did you know my mother? Was she still very young? You were a tiny little thing. We used to tickle you, to make you laugh. Your laughter seemed an enchantment to me. The joy of nature. You see why I have turned out so foolish, so mischievous, so thoughtless. And sometimes you used to take me in your arms? Many times. Electra, smiling without having dried her tears. And didn't I pull your mustache sometimes? Sometimes so hard that you hurt me. You would slap me on my hands. Come come why don't you know i believe they still hurt questa impatient to come to his subject but let's come to the subject i warn you electra that this is strictly confidential it must be between us two oh you frighten me don leonardo there is no cause for fear you see in me a friend the best of friends you will see in this act the purest interest the highest sentiments Electra confused. Yes, yes, I don't doubt it, but— You will see why I take this step. Although I am not very old, I do not feel that I have the vitality for very long. A widower for twenty years. I have no other family than my daughter, Paca, married and gone away. I am almost alone in the world, with my foot in the stirrup to pass over to the other— and my solitude, alas, seems if it would carry me there more quickly. With great difficulty in expressing himself. But before I go. Pause. Electra, I thought about you a great deal, before they brought you to Madrid, and on seeing you, my God, I have thought, I have felt, how shall I say it, a sweet affection, the purest of affections mingled with the clamours of my conscience electra astounded conscience what a grave thing that must be mine is like a babe that is still in the cradle questa with sadness mine is old and full of memories i repeat it points out to me without ceasing the grave errors of my life you grave errors and you so good yes yes good good and a sinner in short, let us leave the errors, and let us come to their consequences. I do not wish that you should live unprotected. You do not possess any fortune. It is doubtful whether the protection of Urbano and Evarista will be constant. How can I consent that you should be left poor and destitute some day when least expected? Electra with a painful struggle between her consciousness and her innocence. I don't know whether I understand. I don't know whether I ought to understand. The most delicate thing would be to understand, without telling me so, and accept my protection without thanking me. My duty and your rights go hand in hand. Thanks to me, Electra, there will not be broken the thread that unites each creature with those that have been and with those that still exist. And if I have made up my mind to broach this question today, it is because, because a short time ago, there came over me the fear of sudden death. My father and my brother died, as if struck by lightning. The lesion of the heart, destroyer of my family. I have it too. Pointing to his heart. It is a doleful clock that counts for me the days, the hours. I cannot put this off. Death must not surprise me leaving this precious one without protection i cannot i cannot wait i must end by telling you my daughter 
that you may be assured of a modest fortune a modest fortune i sufficient to live in a fitting independence electra confused and i what merit have i for pardon me i cannot convince myself of it will come the conviction will come and why do you not speak of this matter to my uncle and aunt questa preoccupied because i will tell them in time just now only you must know my intention but questa with emotion rising and now electra will you love this poor invalid whose days are numbered yes it is easy for me to love but don't talk of dying don leonardo it comforts me to know that you will weep don't make me begin now questa hastening his departure to conquer his emotions good-bye my daughter good-bye detaining him and what name shall i give you that of a friend no more good-bye releasing himself to leave goes out at the back electra gazes after him until he disappears scene ten electra the marquis electra meditating goodness what am i to think his broken sentences say more than if they were completed my darling mother the marquis who enters from the garden advances slowly ah marquis did i frighten you not at all just surprised me if you have come to hear me play the journey is in vain i shall not study to-day i am glad then we shall be able to talk scarcely have i met you and i am filled with admiration of your charms and knowing something of your character i am anxious to know more you wonder perhaps at this curiosity of mine and may think it somewhat impertinent oh no sir i too am curious and allow me to ask are you a friend of maximo i love him and admire him very much strange thing isn't it to me it seems quite natural you are but a girl and perhaps you cannot understand the reasons for my friendship with the wonderful magician let's see if you understand me explain it to me clearly the society that i frequent the circle of my own family and the habits of my house produce in me an asphyxiating effect almost without knowing it through mere instinct for self-preservation i throw myself at times into an atmosphere that i can breathe my eyes turn to science to nature and maximo is all this air you can breathe life why you know marquis it seems to me that i understand well child you are not stupid at all you must know too that i feel for this fellow an immense interest you love him and admire him for his great qualities and i am sorry for him on account of his misfortunes electra surprised maximo unfortunate what greater misfortune than the solitude in which he lives his premature widowerhood has submerged him in the deepest studies and i fear for his health his children console him and keep him company you have seen them to-day what pretty dears the older who is five years old now is a marvel of intelligence in the little one who is two i see all the graces in the world i adore them i dream of them and i should like very much to be their nurse poor maximo wrapped in his studies cannot attend to them as he ought of course not that's what i say it is very evident maximo needs a wife but here is where my troubles begin and my doubts no matter where i look i cannot find a woman who is worthy to share in the life of the great man you will not find her there is none there is none because for maximo you must seek a woman of great sense that's it of great sense just the opposite from me for i have none 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 i shouldn't say that another thing when you hear me say silly things to him and call him brute old man foolish sage you mustn't think that i say them seriously it's all in fun marquis of course of course i understood that fun impertinent perhaps for maximo is very serious do you think sir that i ought to become very sober oh no all creatures are as god made them one must not restrain oneself it is not necessary to be sober to be good well you see marquis i who don't know anything 
I have that the same way. Pantoja appears in the background. Pantoja aside in the doorway. That incorrigible libertine, that veteran of vice, dares to cast his poisonous glance upon this flower. Advances slowly. Marquis aside. Well, the dark shade has come between us, and we cannot talk any more. The Marquis came to hear me play, but I am very dull. We shall leave it for another day. You know that the great Beethoven is my passion. They have told me that Electra interprets him splendidly, and I was hoping to hear his sonata pathetique and the moonlight sonata. But we have amused ourselves chattering, and since there is no opportunity... Pantoja with asperity. Yes, the study hour is over now. Marquis recovering his society manner. Another day, perhaps. My friend, Virginia and I shall be much pleased if you will honor us with your counsel with reference to the convent of Las Esclavas. Yes, yes. I shall go this afternoon to see Virginia, and we can talk it over. You will find her at the convent all the afternoon. And, since I am the troop here... With a gesture of leaving. No, not at all, Marquis. I must go, with the music to the laboratory of Maximo. Yes, there you will find much diversion. Good-bye, my esteemed friend. May God be with you. The Marquis goes towards the garden. Scene 11. Electra, Pantoja. Pantoja with vivacity. What was he saying? What was this corrupter of innocence telling you? Nothing. Stories. Funny anecdotes. Ah, stories! Have no confidence in funny anecdotes and pleasant tales, for these jasmines hide a poisonous sting. I noticed that you were disturbed, as when one hears the gliding of a serpent among the bushes. Oh, no! The uneasiness which unseemly conversation produces will be calmed by my beneficent and healthful words. You are a poet, Sir Pantoja, and I am pleased to listen to you. Pantoja, pointing out a chair to her, they both sit down. My daughter, I am going to give you an explanation of the intense affection which you have noticed in me. Have you noticed it? Yes, sir. An explanation which is equivalent to revealing a secret. Electra, much frightened. Oh, heavens, I am trembling. Be calm, my daughter. Listen first to that which is for me very sad. Electra, I have been very wicked. But you really give the impression of a saint. I was very wicked. I say, on one occasion of my life. Sighing. Oh, it was many years ago. Electra with interest. How many? Can I remember the time when you were so wicked, Don Salvador? No. When I debased myself, when I blinded myself in sin, you were not yet born. But I was born. Pantoja, after a pause. Of course. I was born. For heaven's sake, Sir Pantoja, finish quickly. Your confusion indicates to me that we must turn our eyes from the past. The present is for us very satisfactory. Why? Because in me you will have a support, a protector for your whole life. An ineffable happiness it is for me to care for a being so noble and beautiful, to defend you from all harm, to guard you, to watch over you, to guide you, in order that you may keep yourself always virtuous and pure, in order that neither shadow nor breath of evil may ever touch you. You are a child that seems an angel. I am not satisfied that you seem so. I wish you to be one. Electra, coldly. An angel that belongs to you. And in this I am to see an act of charity, extraordinary and sublime. It is not charity, it is duty. To my duty to protect you there is added your right to be protected. This confidence, this authority. Is born of my intense affection, as force is born of heat. And my protection is the work of my conscience. Electra rises with great agitation. Moving away from Pantoja, she exclaims aside. Two! Heavens! Two protectors! And this one wishes to force me! Horrible confusion! 
Allowed. Sir Pantoja, I respect you, I admire your virtues, but your authority over me I do not see clearly, and pardon my boldness, obedience, submission, I owe only to my aunt. It is all the same. Evarista does me the honor to consult with me in all her affairs. Obeying her, you obey me. And my aunt wishes, too, that I should become an angel, her angel, your angel. The angel of every one, of God, chiefly. Be convinced that you have fallen into good hands, and be satisfied, my dear daughter. Let yourself grow up in virtue, in purity. Electra with displeasure. Very good, sir. Let them purify me. But am I very wicked? You may come to be so. To prevent a disease is more prudent than to cure it after it has entered into the system. Alas for me! Raising her eyes and remaining as in an ecstasy, she utters a deep sigh. Pause. Why do you sigh so? Let my heart relieve itself. The consciences of others weigh heavily upon me. Scene 12 Electra, Pantoja, Evarista in the background. Friend Pantoja, Mother Barbara de la Cruz is waiting to take leave of you and receive your final orders. Oh, I forgot. I am coming at once. Aside to Evarista. We have been talking. Watch carefully. We must look out for evil influences. Before leaving at the back, the Marquis and Maximo come in at the right. Scene 13. Electra, Evarista, the Marquis, Maximo. I am a little late. Not at all. You were in Maximo's study? Two groups are formed. Electra and Maximo at the left, Evarista and the Marquis at the right. Yes, madam. That man is a wonder. Continues, thinking over what he has seen in the laboratory. Electra sighing. Yes, Maximo. I have to consult with you about a serious matter. Maximo, with much interest. Tell me quickly. Electra, looking cautiously at the other group. I cannot now. When? I don't know. I don't know when I shall be able to tell you. It isn't a thing that can be told in two words. Ah, poor little girl, that which I told you. Are you beginning to note already the serious things of life, its bitternesses, its duties? Perhaps. Maximo, looking at her fixedly, with great interest. I note in your face a cloud of sadness, of fear, a great novelty for you. They wish to annihilate me, to enslave me, to reduce me to something angelical. I do not understand it. Maximo, with energy. Do not consent to it, for heaven's sake. Electra, defend yourself. What do you advise me to do to avoid it? Maximo, without hesitation. Independence independence emancipation more clearly insubordination you mean that i shall be able to do anything i take a notion to to play all i wish to enter into your house as into a promised land to throw things around with your children and take them into the garden with me or wherever i like all this and more be careful what you are saying i know what i am saying but you have recommended me to do quite the contrary maximo looking at her fixedly in your face and in your eyes I see a radical change in the conditions of your life. You are afraid, Electra. Yes. Fearful. You... Doubting what verb to use, starts to say love and does not dare. Desire something with great energy. Electra effusively. Yes. Pause. And you tell me against fears and desires, insubordination... Yes, give your impulses free rein in order that what is in you may show itself and we may know what you are. What I am? Do you wish to know? Your heart. My secrets? Your heart. In it is everything. Electra, noticing that Evarista is watching her. Hush! They are looking at us. Scene 14. The same. Don Urbano, Pantoja at the back. Shall we lunch? Pantoja to Evarista, startled, seeing a lecture with Maximo. Why, daughter, you leave her alone with Mephistopheles? <laughs> there is no cause for alarm, friend Pantoja. Marquis, laughing. Of course not, for this Mephistopheles is a saint. Gives his arm to Evarista. 
Pantoja imperiously taking Electra by the hand to lead her away. With me. Electra going with Pantoja turns her head to look at Maximo. Maximo looking at Electra and Pantoja. With you? We shall see with whom. Maximo and Don Urbano go out last. End of Act One Act Two of Electra by Benito Perez Galtos, translated by Charles Alfred Turell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two. The same decoration. Scene One. Evarista, Don Urbano seated together at the table occupied with business balbina who is serving the lady with a cup of broth don urbano preparing to write what have you said to the rector of the patrocinio evarista with a cup in her hand why you know already that the plan and the estimate suit us and that now we shall close with the contractor don't forget that the proposition of the latter reaches reading a paper three hundred twenty thousand pesetas no matter there still remains to us enough to continue helping the ambulance station to balbina who takes away the cup uh, don't forget what i told you to do i shall watch it madam i think there is no harm in this play of miss electra if she receive letters and notes from a suitor it is for pastime and to have another motive for laughter and gaiety but how do they get to the house the letters of this dandies i don't know yet but i shall watch patros for it seems to me take great care and tell me what you discover you may be sure i will madam exit balbina scene two the same Maximo at the back, in haste with plants and papers. Do I disturb you? No, my son. Come in. Two minutes, aunt. Do you come from the ministry? I have just had a conference with the Bilbanos. Today is a day of trial for me. Excessive work, a thousand affairs, and in addition the house turned upside down. Why, what has happened? Balbina told me that you dismissed your servants yesterday they served me miserably they robbed me i am alone with the clerk and the nurse come and eat here and leave the children there if i bring them they will bother you and will upset the house don't bring them no i adore children but i don't like them near me <laughs> they throw all my things around and soil everything the confusion of their stamping their loud laughing and their quarrelling drives me crazy then the fear that they will fall, that the cats will scratch them, that they will get wet, that they will bump their heads. Ugh. I should prefer that you send me a cook. Henrietta can go. Tell her, Urbano. We shall not forget. Maximo, preparing to leave. All right. Wait a minute. It seems your affairs are getting along well. You know what I have told you. If the wonderful magician needs more capital for the exploiting of his inventions, he has only to call upon us. Thank you, aunt. I have at my disposal all the money I need. Within a few years, the magician will be richer than we. It might happen. Fruit of his peculiar intelligence. Maximo, with modesty. No, of perseverance, of laborious patience. Oh, <laughs> I should say you work brutally as is necessary aunt through duty and a little more for pleasure for recreation for scientific enthusiasm it is really a monomania an intoxication evarista in a sermon-like tone ah no it is ambition the cursed ambition which upsets so many and in the end causes their ruin a very legitimate ambition aunt you see that Evarista, taking the words from his mouth. The eagerness, the thirst for riches in order to satisfy with them the appetite for pleasure, 
Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. That is what you want and for which you live in continual movement, comprising in the struggle your nature, stomach, brain, heart. You do not think of the brevity of life, nor of the vanity of desires for temporal things. You do not succeed in convincing yourself that everything will remain here. Maximo, gracefully, impatient to leave. Everything will remain here except myself, for I am going right now. Jose announcing. The Marquis of Ronda. Maximo stopping. Ah, then I cannot go without greeting him. Evarista gathering up the papers. <laughs> God doesn't wish us to work today. I can guess what he is coming for. Let him come in, Jose. Jose goes out. He comes to invite you to the dedication of the new convent of La Esclavitud, founded by Virginia. He told me of it last night. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> but is it today? Scene 3. Evarista, Don Urbano, Maximo, the Marquis. Marquis, bowing meekly. Illustrious friend, Urbano. To Maximo. How are you? I did not think I should find the magician here. The magician salutes you and disappears. One moment, my friend. Detaining him. Why, yes, Marquis, we shall go. You knew about it already? At what hour is it? At five sharp. To Maximo. I do not invite you, for I know that you haven't time for social life. Alas, no. I wasn't expecting you today. How? Since we have a religious and secular holiday? Well, tonight you shall not get rid of me. Evarista, lightly mocking. We have been noticing, with great pleasure, of course, the frequency of the visits of the Marquis to the laboratory of the great sorcerer. <laughs> the Marquis honors me with his friendship and with the interest he displays in my studies. I have acquired a sudden passion for machinery and electrical phenomena. Whims of age. Don Urbano to Maximo. Well, you have a good pupil. God knows. Maliciously. God knows who is the pupil and who is the master. Apropos of the master. I am sorry that since he is present, I am deprived of saying all the bad things that come to me. Go along, Maximo. Go along so that we may say bad things about you. <laughs> I am going. Let the evil tongues wag as they please. To the Marquis. Farewell as always. To his aunt. Goodbye, aunt. God be with you, my son. Marquis to Maximo, who leaves. Until tonight, if they let me. To Evarista. Extraordinary man. I admired him by reputation, and knowing him now, and appreciating for myself his high qualities, I maintain that there is no one who can equal him. In the scientific world. In all fields, madam. Certainly as for intelligence. Marquis with enthusiasm. And as for heart, well, who is there more noble, more sincere? Evarista, not wishing to continue a delicate discussion. <laughs> good, Marquis, good. Changing the subject. So you were saying that we should be there at five? Exactly. I shall count on you and Electra. I don't know whether we ought to take her. Oh, I was charged especially with asking the presence of the girl at this solemnity. And I put on the airs of a good diplomat, declaring that I should succeed. Virginia desires to make her acquaintance. In that case... Promise not to put me bad? Oh, you may count on Electra. There will be a good many people there. Rises to leave. It will be a brilliant affair. Goodbye, then. I have to go to the Otumbas. I shall come by here. Here's the voice of Electra at the left, gaily chattering and laughing. The Marquis stops on hearing her. Scene 4. The same, Electra. 
a lecture within <laughs> darling another kiss silly silly both of us but we understand each other appears at the left with a large handsome doll which she kisses and rocks in her arms stops as if ashamed child what are you doing don't scold her mademoiselle lulu and i were passing the time telling stories she talks nonsense today a lecturer going away talking secretly to the doll the rest watch her lulu how pretty you are but he is nicer how happy will my love be with you and i with both of you she continues to be so playful so since yesterday we have noticed in her a sadness which troubles me sadness idealism and now you see marquis affectionately going to her electra my dear child electra putting the doll's face to that of the marquis come mademoiselle don't be bashful give the marquis a kiss before the marquis can kiss the doll electra gives him a light rap with the doll's head ah rogue you hit me stroking electra's chin lulu will not be angry if i say that i like her big friend better both have the same amount of brains and what were you talking about to your doll sometimes i tell her my troubles <laughs> you troubles yes i troubles and when you see us so silent we are thinking of past things the past interests you sign of reflection <laughs> what are you saying past things of the time when i was born with gravity the day in which i came into the world was a very sad day wasn't it some of you remember why how absurdly you talk my daughter aren't you ashamed for the marquis to see you so silly do you not believe that the fools the most foolish and the children the most childish do their simple acts with some reason very true and what sense is there in this play so unsuited to your age electra looking at the marquis who is smiling i can't tell you now that means that i should go child yes i am going i am sorry that my affairs do not allow me time to enjoy the graces of this child good-bye electra i shall return at five to take you with me me yes daughter we are going to the dedication of los esclavas i too now you may go and get ready will there be many people frightened oh a lot of people make me afraid i like solitude why we shall be just like a family well i must not stay longer a good-bye marquis marquis to electra at five child and we must learn to be punctual exit at the rear with don urbano scene five evarista electra <sighs> explain to me now why you are so silly and playful you see aunt i had a doubt what shall i say a problem you problems yes in the plural problems for it is not one alone god help you and i was trying to have someone solve them with a few words who electra sighing oh, a person who is no longer in this world child my mother don't be astonished my mother can tell me and counsel me don't you believe that people who are in the other world can come to ours gesture of incredulity on the part of evarista you don't believe it i do i believe it because i have seen it i have seen my mother oh virgin of carmen how bad your poor head is when i was a little girl so big in the ursuline convent at bayonne yes my mother used to appear to me in dreams of course no no when i was as awake as i am now leaves the doll on a chair electra take care what you are saying when i was sad alone and sick when someone hurt me making me understand my unfortunate situation in the world my mother used to come to console me at first i saw her vaguely fading away confusing herself with objects nearby and far away she advanced like a light trembling so then she didn't tremble aunt she was a still form 
still a sad image it was my mother i could not doubt it in the beginning i saw her dressed as a great lady very elegantly then one day i saw her in a nun's garb her face in a white hood her body clothed with the black serge she had a majesty a beauty that one cannot imagine who has not seen her poor girl don't get delirious when she got near me she would reach out her arms as if she would embrace me she spoke to me in a voice very sweet very distant soft i don't know how to explain it i asked her questions and she used to answer me greater incredulity on the part of evarista but you don't believe it uh, go on daughter go on in the ursuline convent i had a lovely doll that i called lulu too and see how strange aunt whenever i went through the garden late in the afternoon alone with the doll in my arms both of us melancholy looking at the sky the vision of my mother was sure it never failed at first among the trees like a figure formed by groups of leaves then revealing itself clearly and advancing towards me between the dark trunks and later when you were older when you lived in ondaye did she come too in the first years not afterwards i used to play then with live dolls the little ones of my cousin rosora a boy and a girl who were always with me they adored me and i them at night in the solitude of my room the children asleep they there i here indicating the place of the two beds my mother used to pass between the two beds and approaching me oh don't go on for heaven's sake you make me afraid but these visions did they stop when you got older when i quit having dolls and children at my side that is why i want to become a child again and i try to go back to the age of innocence with the hope that being what i was then my mother will come to me again and will answer all that i should like to ask her and may give me counsel and what doubts have you to <laughs> electra looking at the floor doubts things that i don't know and should like to know oh, what nonsense and what is this thing so serious about which you need counsel and advice oh a thing hesitates is almost on the point of telling what tell me a thing with childlike timidity handling the doll and without daring to declare her secret a thing evarista severe but affectionately oh such childishness is intolerable takes the doll away from her alas electra foolish child you are a model of intelligence and grace when you are not the image of selfishness angels and demons are struggling for your heart we must intervene my daughter we must mediate in this struggle driving away the demons so that they may not fall upon you and cause you sorrow kisses her come be serious you need to occupy yourself with something to distract your imagination don't forget that at five go and get ready now yes aunt you have plenty of time three quarters of an hour i shall be ready and no jests electra be careful exit at the left with a doll in her arms dangling it scene six electra patros electra looking after the doll poor lulu how she dangles imitating the position of the doll and feeling the sore shoulder oh how it hurts sits down thinking and he waiting for me how sad it was to leave him how he cried and threw out his arms to me i promised to return patros appearing cautiously at the door miss electra come in patros advancing with caution is there any one here we are alone there is no opportunity like this miss electra now or never have you come from there yes from there many gentlemen who were talking numbers millions and more millions inside nobody electra hesitating dare we there is no danger virgin of carmen protect me turning to the garden entrance electra stops frightened wait wouldn't it be better for us to go out on the other side perhaps my aunt might be at the dining-room window she might be let's go around this way to the left this way 
courage and valor with caution exit both running at the left scene seven don urbano jose who enters at the back just as the girls leave who went out there it was patros sir so how many there are five now who are making love to the young lady five that i have seen god knows how many more there are and what is to be done do they walk around the house two in the morning two in the afternoon and the young fellow at night have you noticed whether there is any communication between the window of electra's room and the street by means of a basket or a telephone cord no i haven't seen anything of the kind but i think it would be well to put the young lady in an inside room to the left and do some of these fellows come into the garden secretly i'd give them a good drubbing all right keep on watching enter cuesta at the rear scene eight don urbano cuesta with papers and letters leonardo thank god i told you i couldn't come in the morning to jose giving him a letter have this registered quickly then you will bring me some more letters exit jose don urbano taking a paper that cuesta gives him what is this the receipt for the hundred thousand odd sign now a receipt for sixty seven thousand all right to send to rome and avarista dressing i know already that you are going to the dedication of the la esclavitude and that you are going to take electra it is certain that we can expect nothing good of this girl every day she shows more extravagances new frivolities cuesta with vivacity which indicate nothing bad they are like symptoms you see like symptoms on this account evarista who is foresight itself has thought of submitting her to the healthful regime of san jose de penitencia allow me my dear urbano to dissent from your opinions you will say that i should not meddle on the contrary as a good friend of the family you may give us your opinion advise us this dragging into the convent life young girls who have not shown a decided vocation is very serious and you should not think it strange if some oppose who how should i know someone there is in the life of this girl an unknown factor some fine day it may happen i cannot be sure what will happen some fine day when you pull the string to shut the girl up against her will a voice may say stop sir stop madam stop and we shall reply very well sir unknown factor here you have her relieve us from a troublesome and vexing guardianship cuesta feeling great fatigue sits down this is just a supposition urbano a conjecture are you ill do you need anything no this heart of mine is not as strong as my will rest man why do you not lie down a while why don't you know how much i have to do taking out some papers right away two very urgent letters that must get off to-day write them here fixing a place at the table and taking away some books and papers all right i'll install myself here i too am very much behind i have a thousand little things don't bother about me writing excuse me leonardo Evarista will be out before long cuesta without looking at him good-bye exit don urbano at back scene nine cuesta electra patros who appear at the left door as if reconnoitering be careful patros it will be hard to get him through here patros recognizing cuesta whose back she sees writing don leonardo hush the best way is to leave him in your room until to-night while i have to go to this cursed dedication cuesta hearing voices turns around ah electra do we bother you down leonardo no my daughter will you do me the favor to wait a moment until i finish this letter i want to talk with you i shall be here sir aside to patros 
What a nuisance. Allowed. We only came to look for a paper and pencil so that Patros could note down. Takes a paper and pencil from the table. Aside to Patros. Take good care of him for me. Do. Oh, how pretty he was sleeping. The little mouth and those dirty hands and such black fingernails as if he had been scratching in the ground. Oh, I could eat him up and his curly hair and his little feet electra with an effusion of affection i shall go crazy take good care of him patros watch that i'm taking him two little rolls now no no they will hurt his stomach take him some soup and how shall i get it that's true ah ask for a cup of milk for me that's it i shall give it to him as soon as he wakes up here are the paper and pencil for your scribbling that is what amuses you most. Then tonight, watching an opportunity, we shall take him to my room, and he shall sleep with me. Questa finishing the letter. Now it is finished. Excuse me a moment, Don Leonardo. Aside to Patras. Don't leave him. Be careful. If Don Leonardo doesn't keep me long, before I dress I shall come and give him a kiss. Petros. Sir. Will you take this letter to the post office? Right away. Exit. Scene ten. Questa, Electra. Questa, seizing her hands. Playful little woman. Come here. What a pleasure to see you. Do you like me very much, Don Leonardo? If you only knew how it pleases me for people to like me. The most important thing, my daughter, is for you to be serious, that God-fearing people should find nothing to censure. They have told me. I believe they have exaggerated that lovers are swarming around you alas yes i can scarcely count them but there is only one of them that i like only one and that is oh wouldn't you like to know do i know him i should say you do has he declared himself in a formal manner why he hasn't declared himself at all he hasn't said anything to me yet the fellow is timid and you call him a lover I shouldn't give him that name. And you love him? And you know or suspect that he loves you? That's it. I suspect it. I am not sure of it. And you will not tell me? Me, who? Oh, no. Oh, do have confidence in me. I cannot now. I must go and dress. All right. We shall talk about it later. Electra, timidly, looking towards the back, is my aunt coming? Go and dress, and tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Goodbye. Runs off to the right. Moved by a sudden idea, turns half around. First I have to... Aside. I cannot conquer the temptation. I want to give him another kiss. Goes running to the left. Questa follows her with his eyes. Sighs. Scene 11. Questa, Don Urbano, Evarista. Afterwards, Electra. Questa, gathering up his papers. What happiness would be mine if I could love her openly? Evarista dressed for the street. Pardon the delay, Don Leonardo. My husband has told me that we are arranging an extensive transaction. Don Urbano giving Questa a receipt. Here. Yeah. I shall not be astonished to see you come in with another load of money. God sends it, God receives it. <laughs> Electra appears at the door on the left. On seeing her aunt, she hesitates and does not dare to enter. Finally she tries to escape, but Evarista sees her and stops her. Oh, you scamp! Why are you not dressed? Where have you been? In the ironing room. I went to have Patros iron me a jabbo. <laughs> and you are so calm about it. Noticing that there is a letter in one of Electra's pockets. What have you here? Takes it. A letter. Affairs of youth. You cannot imagine, my friend Questa, how this child worries me with her childishness, which is not so innocent either. Gives the letter to her husband. You read it. Let's see. Don Urbano reads. My dear young lady, it seems to me that in your bewitching face... Evarista mocking. How pretty! Electra restrains her laughter with difficulty. 
that in your bewitching face the supreme creator has written the problem of the of the without understanding the following word electro prompting of the cosmos that's it of the cosmos symbolizing in your luminous glances in your divine mouth the powerful physical agent that evarista snatching the letter <laughs> what unseemly nonsense don urbano discovering another letter in the other pocket why here's another takes it let's see let's see this one my daughter you are a real letterbox questa reading heartless electra with what words shall i express my despair my madness my frenzy enough this is certainly not innocent troubled examining the letters i will wager there are more avarista indulgence aunt don't be angry <laughs> not be angry i will settle it with you now go and dress don urbano looking at his watch it is almost time i shall be here in a minute go along go along glad to see herself free electra runs to her room scene twelve cuesta don urbano evarista pantoja evarista with sadness and dismay now you see don leonardo the tranquillity in which she allowed her secrets to be exposed shows that there is in all this little or no evil intent alas i do not think the same way no no pantoja at the back somewhat out of breath here they are and cuesta too just so one cannot talk freely evarista pleased to see him ah oh, at last you come they form two groups at the left cuesta seated don urbano standing at the right pantoja and evarista seated i have come to tell you of very serious things evarista frightened oh dear god's will be done pantoja repeating the phrase with reservations god's will be done yes but let our will be the same as god's and let us use our will to bring about good cost what it may your strength fortifies my soul well and what to-day at the requesens they talked about the girl in the most shameful terms they said that pursued most indecorously by a whole crowd of lovers she delights in receiving and sending letters at all hours of the day unfortunately salvador the frivolities of the girl are such that although i love her so much i cannot come to her defence pantoja anxiously well listen further and you will see that human malice has no limits last night the marquis of ronda in a company at his house before virginia his saintly wife and other persons of great respectability did not cease to praise the charms of electra in a very worldly and repugnant manner let us have patience my friend patience yes patience a virtue which is worth very little if it is not inspired by resolution let us determine my dear friend to put electra where she will not see examples of levity not hear any words spoken with malicious accent where she will breathe an atmosphere of austere virtue where the buzz of the poisonous and immodest suitors will not disturb her in the critical age of the formation of character we ought to preserve her from the great danger madam from the terrible danger which is man there is no greater evil than man man when he is not good i know it from myself i have been my own master my wildness which i cured by the grace of god and afterwards my sorrowful convalescence taught me the medicine for souls leave it to me i will save the girl don urbano interrupts him passing to the group on the right don urbano giving meaning to his words do you know what cuesta tells me well that among this multitude of lovers there is one preferred electra herself confessed it and who is it passes from the right to the left of the stage 
Pantoja and Urbano remaining at the right. Don Urbano to Pantoja. This might change the terms of the problem. Pantoja with ill humor. But what does this preference signify? Is it a pure affection, or an immoderate feverish passion, one of those that are the very gravest symptoms of the madness of the age? Very excited, raising his tone. For it must be known, Urbano, it must be known. We shall know it. Pantoja passing to the side of Cuesta. And you, friend Cuesta, didn't you question her? Evarista in the center to Don Urbano. I try to find out. Cuesta, somewhat vexed already, talking to Pantoja. It seems to me that you display an undue zeal, and not at all to be desired. Pantoja, with a suavity that does not hide his haughtiness. My zeal, my dear Leonardo, is what it should be. Cuesta, a little hurt. I, as a friend of the family, believed. Pantoja, taking Don Urbano aside to the right. Cuesta mixes too much in things that do not concern him. Cuesta to Evarista, without heeding whether Pantoja hears him. Our good Pantoja interferes too much in other people's business. Evarista, without knowing what explanation to give him. It is that, as our very old and loyal friend... Uh... So am I. Don Urbano, looking towards the back of stage. Here is the Marquis now. Scene 13. The same, the Marquis. Good greetings to you all. Pantoja aside. Bad enough since he comes. Marquis, after bowing to Evarista. And Electra? She will be here in a moment. <laughs> Marquis, bowing to all. We haven't much time left. It is time now. Pantoja, impatient, waits for Electra at the door of her room. Cuesta is talking with Don Urbano. Scene 14. The same, Electra. Pantoja, with joy, announcing her. Here she is. Electra enters at the right, dressed with most elegant simplicity and distinction. Marquis, joyful and eulogistic. Oh, how elegant! Electra, pleased, turning around so that they can see her from all sides. Gentlemen, how do you like it? Divine. Ideal. Very good, my daughter. Pantoja, displeased at the eulogies of Electra. Are we going? They start to go. Scene 15. The same. Balbina, who interrupts brusquely the scene, entering at the left hurried and out of breath madam madam general alarm all except electra what, what is, is it? it oh what has the young lady done electra aside stamping her foot they have discovered me heavens heavens what pranks she does think of <laughs> laughing a oh, fine in the name of the father Evarista impatiently. Tell it. I will confess if you will let me. It was that. She went to the house of Don Maximo, and she stole, for it was like a robbery, a very funny one, surely. But what? The little boy. All looking at Electra, who soon recovers from her fright and adopts a calm and grave attitude. But my daughter. Child, child. He was sound asleep in the house. They entered on tiptoe. The young lady and that crazy Petros. They carried him away and brought him here. It is ridiculous. Pantoja hiding his irritation. And moreover very unbecoming. Electra effusively. And I love him so much. And he does me. Marquis with enthusiasm. What a girl! She deserves indulgence. Maximo will be furious. Jose ran to tell him. We shall know soon. And where is the little fellow? The young lady hid him in Petra's room with the idea of carrying him to her room tonight and keep him there with her. Laughter of the gentleman except Pantoja, who frowns. The child woke up a while ago and Petros gave him a bun to entertain him. 
I heard him, and I hurried there to find out. Holy Virgin, I want to take him, and he wouldn't let me. I shall have to whip him. Electra running to the left with instinctive impulse. My darling. Pandoha wishes to stop her. No. Evarista seizes here by the arm. Wait. Balbina from the door on the left. You can hear him crying from here. My poor little fellow. Have him taken home. Nobody shall touch him. He is mine. She breaks loose forcibly from Evarista and Pantoja, who try to stop her and runs quickly out at the left. Scene 16. The same. Jose. Pantoja, angry withdrawing to the right. What a lack of sense, of dignity. Jose, hurriedly from the garden. Madam. What did Maximo say? He didn't know anything about it. He was with some gentlemen. When I told him, he began to laugh, but so tranquilly. He says that the young lady will take care of the baby. Calmness, indeed. Evarista to Jose. Go take him home. That's the way to teach this silly girl. I should say, let her enjoy a plaything so harmless. Scene 17. The same. Electra at the left with a child in her arms. The child is about two years old. My darling boy. Child, for heaven's sake, put him down and let's go. Don Urbano in a hurry. We shall be late. Cuesta to the Marquis. It is a trait of motherhood. I applaud it. And I think it is divine. Evarista wishing to take the child from her. Come, girl. Electra, with a light step, gets away from them. The child clings to her neck. No, I can't leave him now. No, no. Take him, Balbina. No, I say no. Goes from one side to the other, seeking refuge. Give him to me. No. Pantoja commandingly to Jose. You take him. No, he is mine. But, child, we have to go. Go on, then. Her heart bothers her, for it hides the child's forehead. With a quick movement, she takes it off and throws it down. She continues walking with the child, fleeing from those who try to take it. Enough. Are you coming or not? Electra, paying no attention, talking to the child who throws his arms around her neck and kisses her. Go to sleep, my dear. Don't be afraid, little one. I'll not let you go. Well, are we going or not? I am not going. Are you hungry, sweetheart? Are you thirsty? See how the little fellow clings to me, begging me not to leave him. Selfish people. Don't you know that he hasn't any mother? But he has someone to take care of him. Evarista commanding the servants. Oh, that's enough. Take him home at once. Electra, resolutely without letting them take the child. Home. Home. With a decided step, and looking at no one, she runs towards the garden and goes out. All look at her, not daring to follow. What a scandal! What a lack of sense! Marquis aside. She has plenty of sense. She has found her way. End of Act Two Act Three of Electra by Benito Perez Galtos, translated by Charles Alfred Chirau. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Laboratory of Maximo. In the background, occupying a large part of the wall, a partition, the lower portion of which is of wood the upper portion of glass which separates the stage from a large room in which there are various pieces of apparatus for producing electrical energy the door in this partition communicates with the street at the right in front a passageway which communicates with the garden of garcia Euste. 
further back a door leading to the private apartments of maximo and to the kitchen between the door and the passageway a bookcase at the left a door leading to the room where the assistants are working beside this door a case filled with physical apparatus and objects for scientific use at the back on both sides of the partition and in the wooden base shelves with flasks of various substances and books in the angle at the right a small sideboard at the left of the stage the laboratory table containing objects indicated in the dialogue forming an angle with it the balances and a concrete base in the centre a small dining table four chairs scene one maximo working on a problem very intent on his task electra standing arranging the many objects that are on the table books scale pans test tubes etc dressed with domestic simplicity and wearing a white apron to me electra the double story which you have told me the supposed authority of two gentlemen is a fact that lacks any positive value without raising his eyes from the paper electra sighing oh, god grant that it be so all reduces itself to two platonic paternities with no legal effect so far the worst is the authority which pantoja wishes to assume an authority that overwhelms me that gives me no rest i beg you let us not talk of this matter it spoils for me the joy i feel being here in your house really yes and more i get my head and my nerves in such a strange state that i have already told you that on certain occasions in my life there takes possession of me an intense desire to see my mother as i used to see her in my childhood well when this tyranny of pantejo increases this desire fills my whole soul and with it i feel a nervous and mental disturbance that announces to me the vision of your mother child this is not proper for a strong mind learn to control your imagination so to work idleness is the first disturber of our minds electra with much animation i am doing what you told me takes some flasks of mineral substances and carries them to one of the cases this in its place so i do not think of the fury of my aunt when she knows maximo buried in his work she will be pleased as if the folly of yesterday were not enough when you carried off the child and bringing him back stayed longer than usual to-day to make amends you have come to my house and there you are so cool thank god for the absence of our uncle and aunt both of them invited by the requensins for the distribution of prizes and to lunch at santa clara they don't know the jump the doll of their house has made over to mine you advised me to become insubordinate of course i have been the instigator of your transgression and i am not sorry for it my conscience tells me that there is nothing wrong in it you are in the house and in the company of an honourable man electra talking without stopping her work of course and furthermore you being busy with your work alone without a servant and i having nothing to do it is very natural that that you should come to take care of me and of my children if that is not logic we may say that logic has disappeared from the world poor little ones everybody knows that i adore them they are my passion my weakness maximo absorbed in a calculation does not hear what she says and it even seems to me she approaches the table carrying some books that were out of place maximo arousing from his absorption what that their mother did not love them more than i do maximo satisfied with the result of his calculation reads aloud a sum zero three hundred ten and eight do me the favour to bring me the table of resistances that red book electra going to the case on the right this one higher up yes yes how stupid getting the book gives it to him it is wonderful that in so short a time you know my books in their places don't you think i have arranged them very well thank god i see in my study cleanliness and order electra well satisfied it is true maximo that i am not absolutely absolutely useless maximo looking at her fixedly nothing exists in creation that does not serve for something who told you that god did not create you for great ends who told you that you are not electra anxiously what a great soul beautiful and noble still somewhat smothered 
between the toe and the sawdust of a doll electra very happy oh if i only were all that maximo rises takes some bars of metal from the case at the left and examines them don't tell me so for i shall be crazy with joy may i sing now yes child yes humming electra repeats over the andante of a sonata good music is like the spur of lazy ideas that do not flow easily it is also like a hook that draws out those that cleave to the depths of the imagination sing girl sing continues to be absorbed in his work electra at the case in the rear i'm going to arrange all this the metalloids go on this side i know them very well by the color of the labels how the work entertains me i could stay here the whole day long maximo gaily well comrade electra going to his side what has the wonderful magician to command i do not command yet i ask takes a flask which contains metal filings or shavings since the playful electra wishes to work with me will she do me the favor to weigh thirty grams of this metal oh yes yesterday you learned to weigh with the balances electra pleased getting ready yes yes give it to me let me do it pouring out the metal on the pan she admires its beauty how pretty what is this aluminum it is like you it weighs little i weigh little but it is very firm looking at her face are you very firm in some things that i keep to myself i am very firm even to severity and i believe if occasion arose i should be so even to martyrdom continues weighing without interrupting the work what things are those it is no matter to you maximo absorbed in his work all right now weigh me seventy grams of this giving her another flask you are like copper no no for it is very ugly but very useful no no i should compare you to gold which is the most valuable of all come come let's not play you corrupt me Electra. you demoralize me let me amuse myself with the qualities of this pretty metal which is like me i am firm unbendable while well, you may say so to Evarista and Urbano, for in the sermon that they will give me to-day, they will tell me forty times over that I am very fragile. Fragile, boy! They don't know what they say. Of course not. How should they know? Be careful, Electra, with your talking. Don't make a mistake in the weight. I make a mistake? How stupid! I am very careful, more so than you think. Of course, I see you are. Turns to one of the cases looking for a crucible. Well, your aunt will be really angry, and it will take a lot of work to convince her of your innocence. God, who sees the heart, knows that there is no harm in this. Why shouldn't they let me stay here all day and take care of you and help you? Maximo coming back with a crucible. Because you are a young lady, and young ladies cannot remain alone in a man's house, however honorable and respectable he may be. Well, we are very happy, we poor young ladies. The work finished she gives him the portions of the metal in porcelain pans here here it is maximo takes the pans how fine what skill what clean hands what steadiness girl and what care not to mix up the work you are very careful and especially satisfied when one is happy everything is well done that's true very true pours the two metals into the crucible that is a crucible yes to fuse the two metals we are being fused we are we are struggling in the midst of fire and hums the sonata do me the favor to call mariano electra going to the door at the left mariano have hill come too heel quickly the master calls you hurrying them come on scene two electra maximo mariano heel the first dressed as a workman in a blouse, the second in ordinary dress with sleeve protectors and a pen behind his ear. Hill showing a calculation. This is the value obtained. Maximo reads rapidly the sum. Zero, one hundred fifty-eight, zero seventy-three. It is wrong. Sure of what he is saying with severity it is not possible that for a cable diameter of less than four millimetres we should obtain a greater circuit according to your calculation the true distance is less than two hundred kilometres why i don't know sir i confused it is bad 
Doubtless your attention was distracted. You don't pay proper attention. Careful attention. While you are making the calculations, you are not paying attention to what you are doing. Electra scolding him. And talking about bullfights, theatres, and a thousand foolish things. That's the way it comes. I will rectify the work. And especially much patience, using all your senses. That's the only way we shall make progress. I am going. Quickly, don't be careless. Exit Hill. Maxima to Mariano, giving him the mixed metals. Here you are. For fusing. Have you prepared the furnaces? Yes, sir. Put them in at once, and when they are at the point of fusing, tell me. With this alloy, we shall make a new test of conductibility. I hope to reach two hundred kilometers with very little loss. Shall we make the test this afternoon? Maximo, troubled by a fixed idea. Yes. I shall not give up this problem. To Electra? It is my fixed idea which will not let me rest. I have a fixed idea, too, and for that I live. On with it. Maximo to Electra. On with it. To Mariano. Always forward. Have you further orders? That you hurry the fusion. That you hurry the fusion, Mariano. Let the metals be well fused. Both together, mademoiselle. Exit Mariano. Both together. Maximo, as if preparing another operation. Now, my gracious pupil. Pardon me, sir magician. I must see if the children are awake. That's true. How long is it since they ate? Three quarters of an hour. They ought to sleep a half hour more. Is that all right? Yes. Anything you arrange is all right. Be careful what you are saying. I am. That everything I arrange is all right. Maximo, looking at her affectionately. Everything. Everything. May it be so. Well, I'm going, and I'll be back in a hurry. With great agility, singing, exit by the door on the right towards the interior of the house. As she leaves, the workman enters at the rear. Scene three. Maximo, the workman. What is it? Sir, today that gentleman came again, the Marquis of Ronda. And why didn't he come in? He asked if he could see you. I told him that you had a visitor. And he, like one of the family, without malice, said, I know, Miss Electra. I think I'll not go in now. And he left. Maximo, quickly. I am sorry. Why didn't you announce him? How silly. He said he would come back. Well, if he comes back, let him come in, even if Miss Electra is here, and especially if she is here. All right, sir. Exit at rear. Scene 4. Maximo, Electra. Electra coming back. They are sleeping like two little angels. I'll leave them there a half hour more to rest their tired little bodies. We ought to look after our own little bodies, or big bodies. Shall we eat? Whenever you like. I have everything ready. Turns to the sideboard, where there is a dinner service, plates, tablecloth, napkins, and a food dish. I like that. Everything prompt. That's the way one always reaches one's goal. Electra spreading the tablecloth. In that way. But with all my care, I shall never get anywhere, alas. Let me help you set the table. Electra gives him the dishes, plates, the wine, and bread. Yes, you will. Do you think so? I am as certain as I am that I am as hungry as fifty horses. I am glad. Now you mustn't fail to like the dinner that these poor hands have prepared. Bring it, and we shall see. Right away. Exit to the interior of the house. Scene 5. Maximo Hill. Strange. Every word, every action, every movement of this precious little woman, in the freedom she enjoys, are just so many more flashes thrown out by her uneasy soul nobly ambitious, anxious to show itself great in affection and superior in virtue. With our door. Blessed be she who brings joy and light to this hiding place of science, sad and dark, and with her charms makes of this barrenness a paradise. Blessed be she who has come to take from his abstraction this Faust, grown old at thirty-five, and to say to him, One does not live by truths alone. Hill, who has entered a short time before, interrupts him, approaching without being seen. Hill, satisfied, showing his calculations. Here it is. I think I have obtained the exact figure. Maximo takes the paper and looks at it vaguely, without attention. Exactness? But do you think that one lives only by truths? 
saturated with them the soul longs for dreams runs after them without knowing whether it goes from the correct to the incorrect or from error to reality reads mechanically zero three hundred eighteen point seven three considering it well hill our mistakes in calculation are pardonable yes sir one gets distracted easily thinking of of vague things undetermined pleasant and the numbers escape vanish in the air and any one may catch them absent-minded i confuse the figure of the potential with that of the resistance but now i have corrected it tell me if it is right maximo reads zero three hundred eighteen point seven three with a sudden transition to an expansive pleasure and if it were not hill if to brighten your mind with sweet ideas with rosate images poetic ones you should have made a mistake what would it matter our mistress our tyrant exactness would pardon it ah sir she does not pardon she is very severe she wears us out enslaves us gives us no chance to breathe to-day no to-day she is indulgent the mistress ordinarily so sullen to-day smiles at us with a merry face you see this sum hill saying it from memory well satisfied zero three one eight point seven three well i say that the greatest poets of the world homer and virgil dante lope calderon never wrote a strophe as inspired and poetic as this is for me these poor numbers it is true that the harmony the poetic enchantment is not in them it is in go on now you may go to lunch leave me leave us pushes him out i don't know myself i also am confused i am very bright with this loss of my calmness it is she who from a convenient place on the stage he looks towards the interior there is the imagination there is the ideal there the divine doll among the poets returns to the front of the stage o oh, electra you playful and smiling how full of life and hope and science how inert how solitary how empty scene six maximo electra electra entering with a smoking casserole here is the best thing let's see let's see what you have made rice with giblets it looks superb sits down you can praise it in advance for it is very good you will see sits down there has come into my house a little angel of a cook call me what you wish maximo but don't call me an angel an angel of the kitchen both laugh not that either passing him a plate shall i serve you not so much you see there is nothing else i thought that in eating one good thing is better than a lot of mediocre ones they begin to eat you have struck it do you know what i am laughing about what if avarista should come now and find us eating so alone and if she knew that i cooked the meal girl do you know that this rice is very good very well cooked in henday a valencian lady was my teacher she gave me a real course in rice i know how to cook it at least seven ways all delicious why little one you are a world to be discovered and who is my columbus there is no columbus i say you are a world that discovers itself electra laughing well because i am such a little world that thinks itself worthy of being discovered poor me they will decide to make a nun out of me in order to keep me from the dangers which threaten innocence maximo after trying the wine looks at the label well you haven't brought a bad wine in your magnificent cellar which is like a library of rich wine i have selected the best bordeaux and an extra fine sherry very good the librarian is not stupid why yes i know already what is awaiting me the solitude of a convent i fear so you cannot escape from it electra frightened what maximo correcting himself i mean yes you shall escape i shall save you you have promised to protect me yes yes nothing more was necessary electra with great interest and what do you propose to do tell me you will see the affair is serious talk with my aunt and what else well i shall talk with your aunt and what will you say to her i shall talk with your uncle electra impatiently good 
let us suppose that you have talked with all the aunts and uncles in the world after that what does the course of procedure matter to you be sure that i shall take you under my protection and once that you are put in an honourable and safe place i shall proceed to the selection of a lover of this i wish to talk to you now are you going to scold me no they have told me already that you are deceiving yourself with the game of living dolls or lovers they call themselves i have sought in them a medicine for my weariness and with every dose i get more bored none of them has awakened in you a feeling other than jests not one they have all declared themselves in writing some in the language of the eyes which i do not always know how to interpret so i do not count them yes you should count all in the catalogue those who show their affection in their eyes as well as those who use the pen and here we are facing the serious condition which calls for my opinion and my counsel electra you ought to marry and soon electra lowering her eyes bashfully soon heavens what is the hurry the sooner the better you need at your side a man a husband you have a heart temperament matrimonial instincts and virtues well from the crowd of your suitors it will be necessary for me to select one the best one who on account of his qualities will be worthy of you and the culmination of happiness will be that my choice coincides with your preference for we should make no progress in the matter be sure of that if i did not succeed in arranging for you a love match electra with spontaneousness oh yes indeed a tranquil life exemplary fruitful with a happy home oh what loveliness but do i merit all this i believe that you do it will soon be seen they finish eating their eyes do you wish more no thank you i have eaten very well electra putting the fruit dish on the table for dessert i have nothing but fruit i know that you like that very much maximo selecting a beautiful apple yes because this is the truth in this the hand of man has no part except to pick it it is the work of god beautiful splendid with no artificiality god makes these wonderful things in order that man may pick them and eat them but not all have the happiness or the good fortune to pass under the tree pears and apple yes they pass under it but some go absorbed looking at the ground so that they do not see the beautiful fruit which says to them pick me enjoy me and they would only need to get away from their thoughts for one moment and raise their eyes maximo looking at her raise their eyes i i am looking now scene seven electra maximo mariano at the left sir what is it it is fiery red ah the fusion when it comes to a white heat let me know mariano about to go all right listen have the bunsen battery arranged for us in the factory tell them that before lighting up i need the large dynamo for a test very well exit at the back scene eight electra maximo afterwards the workman electra sadly soon you will have to be busy with the fusion and i you naturally will go back home electra sighing oh, alas i don't like to think of the fuss there will be when i go in listen keep still and wait 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 always wait they finish eating electra rises and clears off the dishes oh if you do not look after this poor orphan i fear that she is going to be very unhappy it is too bad evarista and pantejo insist that i must be an angel and i god does not call me for the angelical path maximo who has reason and seems disposed to continue his work do not fear trust in me i shall claim you as your protector as your teacher electra approaching him with a supplicating manner but do not delay for the health of your children maximo do not delay listen to what i think why don't you take me like one of your children and keep me like them and with them maximo with seriousness very affectionately do you know that is an excellent idea we must think it over let me think about it workman at the back the marquis of ronda electra frightened oh i must go no daughter he is our friend our best friend you will see to the workman let him come in exit workman he will think perhaps he will think nothing bad have you made coffee i will go and strain it now the finest coffee 
I know how to make it delicious. Bring it in. Let us invite the Marquis. All right, all right. Since you order it, I am going for the coffee. Exit gaily with light step. Scene nine. Maximo, the Marquis, Electra. At the end of the scene, Mariano. Come in, Marquis. My dear illustrious friend. Disconsolately looking around. And Electra? In the kitchen. In the kitchen? She will be back in a moment. We have eaten, and now we shall take coffee. You have eaten? Looking at the table. Some delicious rice prepared by her. Thank God for that. Very disconsolately. But, man, not invite me? Well, I shall not pardon you. Why, it was all so unexpected. Why didn't you come in before, when you were in the shop? That's true. It is my fault. We shall take coffee. And excuse, my dear Marquis, having it in this poor student's room. I have already told you. I can never understand how you, a man of means, having upstairs such fine rooms... It is very simple. Science and the habit of study shut me up in this den. I have put my children in the rooms downstairs in order to have them near me, and here I live like a hermit. Forgetting that you are very rich. My opulence is simplicity, my luxury, solitude, my repose, work, and so I have to live as long as I am alone. The solitude approaches its end. It must be decided. In short, I come, my dear friend, to forewarn you. Enters Electra with the coffee. Oh, the charming divine housekeeper. Electra advances carefully with a tray in which she has the service, fearing that some piece may fall. Heavens, Marquis, don't scold me. I scold you? Nor make me laugh. I am afraid of breaking something. Be careful. The Marquis takes the tray. I am here to prevent any catastrophe. Puts all on the table. I have nothing to scold you for, my daughter. Anywhere else this liberty would frighten me. In the dwelling of most honorable industry, of the most exquisite chivalry, it causes me no fear. Thanks, Sir Marquis. Serves them the coffee. The lady and gentleman across the way will not appreciate it so highly. The news of what is happening here has reached the asylum of Santa Clara, foundation of Maria Roquenzen. Confusion and alarm of the Garcia Yosts. The whole conclave is gathered there. God have mercy on me. Be calm, my daughter. Never mind, leave it to us. In me, for all the contingencies that this prank may involve, you have an unconditional friend, a valiant defender. Electra affectionately. Oh, Marquis, how good you are. How kind. And what have you to say of my coffee? That it is fit for Jupiter, the father of the gods. In Olympus they never served better. Blessed be the hands that made it. God grant to my old age the consolation of repeating these tete-a-tetes with the same two persons. Very affectionately, taking the hands of each. With the two friends who now listen to me, wait upon me, and welcome me. Oh, what a beautiful wish! I am going to allow myself to use, with you, my dear Maximo, a sign of confidence. Do not take it badly. My gray hairs warrant me. I can guess it, Marquis. From this moment, this reform shall be established, a social one. I am going to speak to you with familiarity. I shall consider it a great honor. And why not to me? Marquis to Maximo. What do you think? To her, too? Yes, yes. Under my responsibility. Electra applauding. Bravo, bravo. Marquis very satisfied. Well, my friends, I return your confidence by informing you that the conclave is preparing against you resolutions of unheard of severity. Dear me, what for? The Garcia Yost, very holy and very pious, God keep them, have started to navigate through the infinite and wishing to rise to rise very high have thrown overboard the ballast which is worldly logic maximo makes signs of assent i don't understand this ballast this lead worldly logic human logic we shall pick it up maximo laughing very good 
very good a lecture applauding without understanding it ballast lead picked up human logic very good masters of this force this sacred logic it is urgent that we prepare to frustrate the plans of the enemy our first determination to electra that you return home don't be frightened you will not go alone oh i breathe more freely there will go with you the two professors of worldly logic who are here electra pleased thank heaven what happiness i between the two escorted by a pair of the civil guards maximo to the marquis don't you think we should go by day in order to see with what arrogance the criminals defy the broad daylight oh no i think we should go after dark in order that it may be seen that our honesty does not fear the dark excellent idea by night by night mariano appearing at the left-hand door sir it is at a white heat electra with childish joy the fusion she says this with unconscious joy maximo to mariano i can't go now tell me when it reaches a molten brightness exit mariano marquis with solemnity taking a glass permit me my dear friends to drink to the happy union to the happy marriage of these two metals maximo with enthusiasm raising the glass i drink to our first metallurgist the noble marquis of ronda electra with emotion following the toast to the great and affectionate friend pantoja appears at the right coming from the garden he remains in the door contemplating with a cold stupor the scene scene ten maximo electra the marquis pantoja the enemy electra frightened don salvador the lord help me come in sir pantoja pantoja advances silently slowly to what do i owe the honour anticipating my good friends urbano and evarista who will be back home soon i am here to fulfil my duty and theirs their duty yours you come to surprise us with the air of a spy doubtless you see in us hardened criminals i see nothing i wish to see only electra for whom i have come electra who ought not to be here and who will withdraw now with me and with me will weep her error takes the hand of electra who is as if lifeless motionless through fear come pardon me serene and serious he approaches pantoja with all respect due to you sir pantoja i beg that you release her hand before taking it you should speak with me who am the master of this house and the one responsible for all that occurs in it for all that you see for that which you do not wish to see pantoja after a short hesitation releases the hand of electra very well for the moment i release the hand of the poor creature led astray or brought here by deception and i shall speak to you to whom i wish to say but a few words i come for electra give me that which is not yours that which can never be yours electra is free i have not brought her here against her will nor shall you take her away against her will you who do not even indicate on what you base your authority i do not need to tell you the basis of my authority why should i take that trouble when i am sure that the gracious but blind child cannot deny the obedience that i ask of her electra my dear daughter is not a word or a look of mine sufficient to separate you from these men and take you to the arms of one who has summed up in you the purest love who neither lives nor wishes to live except for you stiff and looking at the floor electra remains silent no it is not enough this word of yours she does not seem convinced my dear sir allow me to question her electra my dear child answer does your heart and your conscience tell you that among all the men that you know those whom you see here and those who are not present that you owe the obedience of love to this man alone ask your heart daughter ask your conscience and if he orders you to follow him and we wish you to remain here which would you do of your own free will electra after a painful struggle stay here you see 
She is fascinated. She is not mistress of herself. You will not insist. You will declare yourself conquered. Pantoja with cold tenacity. I do not consider myself conquered. Reason is always victorious, and I should deem myself unworthy of possessing that which God has given me and that I keep here, if I did not place it continually above all errors and excesses. No, I shall not yield. Maximo, the metals which burn in your furnaces are less firm than I. Your powerful machines are but structures of reed if you compare them with my will. Electra belongs to me. It is sufficient that I say so. Electra aside. What a terror I feel. If you wish to be sure of the power of your will, try it against me. I do not need to try it against you nor any one, but to do that which I ought. Duty, that is my strength. A duty with movable grounds and accidental ends. My duty is moved by a conscience as strong and firm as the axis of the universe, and my ends are so high that you cannot see them, nor will you ever be able to see them. Rise as high as you like. I shall go to the very highest point to tell you that I do not fear you, nor does Electra either. The man is stubborn. In order that you may talk about firm metals. Electra will go home with us. With me, and this will be enough for her aunt and uncle to pardon her caprice. They will not pardon her, nor will they receive her better going with you, because they cannot go against their feelings, against their firmest convictions. With ecstasy. I am in the world in order that Electra may not be lost, and she shall not be lost. This is the wish of the divine will, of which mine is the reflection, which seems to you capricious brutality because you do not understand the great undertakings of the spirit. Poor blind ones! Poor fools! Electra in consternation. Don Salvador, by the Virgin, don't get angry. I am not bad. Maximo is good. You know it. My aunt and uncle know it. You say that I ought not to be here. All right. I shall go back home. Maximo and the Marquis will go with me, and my aunt and uncle will pardon me. To Maximo and the Marquis? Isn't it true that they will pardon me? To Pantoja? Why do you wish Maximo ill, who has never done you any harm? Isn't that so? What reason is there in this ill will? It is not ill will. It is hatred, secret, and inextinguishable. Hate you? No. My creed forbids hate. It is certain that between us, because of your insane ideas, there is a certain incompatibility. Moreover, your father, Lazarus, you stay, and I, alas, we had profound differences of which it is better not to speak now. But I do not hate you, Maximo. Rather do I esteem you. Combining his austere tone with another, more suave and conciliatory. Leaving aside the severity with which I spoke to you in the beginning, and forcing somewhat my character, I beg you that you permit Electra to go with me. Maximo inflexible. I cannot grant your request. Pantoja becoming more violent. For the second time, Maximo, forgetting all resentment, almost, almost desiring your friendship, I beg you, let her go. Impossible. Pantoja swallowing his humiliation. All right, all right. You have refused me the second time. I have only two cheeks. If I had three on which to receive your blows, I should beg you again. With gravity and stiffness, with no inflection of tenderness. Adieu, Electra. Maximo, Marquis. Adieu. Electra, in a low voice to Maximo. For heaven's sake, Maximo, compromise a little. Maximo, positively. No. Didn't you say that you and the Marquis would take me? Let us all go together. This is heard by Pantoja as he moves slowly towards the door. Stops. Maximo with energy. No. He must go first. When it suits us and without the protection of anyone, he shall go. Pantoja coldly, now in the door. And for what do you go? To make the situation of the poor girl worse? I am going. For what am I going? 
May I not know it? It is unnecessary. I have not tried to get you to reveal to me your intentions. And why should I, if I know them? Takes some steps towards the center of the stage, fixing his gaze on Maximo. I do not trust the expression of your eyes. I penetrate into the profoundest depths of your mind. There I see what you are thinking. I did not question you to know your intention, for I know it already, but not from hearing the fine promises you have made. In you there is no truth. In you there is no good. No, no, no. Goes out slowly, repeating the last words. No, no, no. Scene 11. Electra, Maximo, the Marquis, Mariano. Electra frightened. He has gone. Will he come back? What a man! It begins to grow dark. Rather than a man, he is a mountain that wishes to fall upon us and crush us. But he will not fall. It is an imaginary and inoffensive mountain. Electra in consternation, seeking refuge by the side of Maximo. Protect me, Maximo. Take away from me this fear. Have no fear. Come to me. Takes her by the hands. It is growing dark. We ought to go now. Let's go. Incredulous and fearful. But really, are you going with me? Together in this, as we shall be in all our lives. With you always. The darkness increases. Mariano at the door on the left. Sir, it is molten white. Marquis to Mariano. The fusion is finished. Put out the furnaces. Maximo with great effusion, kissing her hands. Luminous soul, great heart, with you always. I am going to tell your aunt and uncle that I claim you, that you will be my companion and the mother of my children. Electra, oppressed as if the joy overcomes her. Do not deceive me. Shall I live with your children? Shall I be with them the oldest one? Shall I be your wife? Maximo, in a strong voice. Yes, yes. The back room being lighted, the whole stage is brilliant. Let us go. It is already night. It is day. An eternal day for me. Maximo puts his arm around her and they go out. The Marquis follows them. End of Act 3《Act Four of Electra by Benito Pérez Caldós, translated by Charles Alfred Schirrell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Garden of the House of Garcia Yuste. At the right, entrance to the house with a stairway of a few steps. At the left corresponding to the entrance a massive grotto-like architecture decorated with bar-reliefs at its foot a stone bench in an angle of elegant appearance urns of exotic plants in pots decorate this terrace whose floor is mosaic between the building and the sanded floor of the garden further back and in the rear the garden with great trees and clusters of flowers in the centre are three curved walks that on the left leads to the street iron chairs it is day scene one electra patris with a basket of flowers she has just gathered electra taking from her pocket a letter leave the flowers here and take the letter patris leaves the flowers three have gone to-day Electra, taking the small flowers and making of them three bouquets. There is not enough time for Maximo and me to say the world of things we wish. Blessed be God, who in one night has brought the young lady such happiness. Last night he asked my hand. Today my aunt and uncle will decide the date of the wedding. And meanwhile letters go and come. In these hours of feverish impatience, Maximo and I cannot deprive ourselves of written communications. In my letter of 815 I told him some very serious things. 
in that of nine twenty five i told him not to neglect to give little lola the spoonful of syrup every two hours and in this which you are taking i am telling him that my aunt is at mass and that she has not come back yet one has to talk naturally of course the mistress will not be back before eleven and at eleven i shall go with my uncle tying up the three bouquets here here they are this for him and these for the children one for each so they will not quarrel starting to arrange a large bouquet now a bouquet for the virgin de los dolores go and come back quickly to help me wait for a reply for even if it is only two words it will fill me with joy i shall go quickly goes out at the rear electra selecting the most beautiful flowers for the bouquet to-day virgin mine my offering will be larger than usual it ought to be so large that there would not be a flower left in my uncle's garden i should like to-day to lay before your image all the pretty things that there are in nature the roses the stars the hearts that know how to love o oh, holy virgin our counsel and hope do not abandon me grant me the blessings i asked of you and you promised me last night speaking to me with the expression of your divine eyes when with my tears i told you my anxiety my gratitude patras hurrying through the garden i do not bring a letter but a message that is worth more what out with it right away as soon as some gentlemen go who are just leaving wait for him here and you can talk a while he has to go to a telephonic conference electra looking towards the back of the stage will he come here's steps it seems he is coming now electra giving her the bouquet here for the virgin all right all right electra stopping her but don't give it to the virgin of the oratory be careful patros not to the one in the oratory but to mine that i have at the head of my bed please don't make a mistake oh no i know enters hurriedly into the house scene two electra maximo afterwards the marquis maximo at a distance opening slightly his arms my girl electra the same my master are we ashamed and don't know what to say very you begin no you in order that you may get rid of your bashfulness tell me a big story that you do not love me you tell me first a great truth that i adore you they approach each other false one traitor take this rose that i picked for you it is very small and modest so i should always like to be your little one puts it in his buttonhole big heart great intelligence increase the heart and discount the intelligence i shall discount nothing do you know i should like to be very rude and very rough in order to come to you in the greatest ignorance so that you might teach me my first ideas i should like to have nothing that does not come from you beautiful ideas and noble sentiments you have in abundance god has endowed you generously heaping on you excellences and now put you in my hands that this very slow workman may model you finish you polish you you are going to show to advantage master i tell you that you will i shall make a good sensible loving woman is that showing off looks at his watch don't stay on my account we must consider first our obligations will you be very late i think not i shall be here when evarista returns from mass and has our marquis come as he promised i left him in the house writing a letter to his notary incomparable friend oh do you know last night when we went back to the house i told him the novel of your paternity the novel in two chapters the man was indignant but by it we gain for we have his complete devotion and with all the more heart and affection he defends us electra surprised but do we still need defence in the essential things no of course not but how can we be sure that the rivals of our friend will not trouble us with difficulties with obstacles of a secondary nature electra becoming tranquil we should laugh at them but even while laughing we should be prepared marquis quickly from the rear here yet marquis into your hands i commend my soul marquis smiling affectionately you will be late i am going now i shall see you very soon electra seeing him start run come back quickly scene three electra the marquis good for the scientific gallant and what an admirable find for you your youthful love needs the love of a widower your wild imagination a cold reason 
At the sight of this man, my girl will become a great woman. I shall be that which he wishes to make me. With great curiosity. Tell me, Marquis, did you know the poor wife of Maximo? My curiosity will not surprise you. It is very natural that I should want to know the former life of the man I love. I didn't know her. I saw her with Maximo once or twice. She was a Basque, rough and ordinary, not very intelligent, but a good wife. But that marriage could not have been a model of happiness. Did you know Maximo's parents? I never saw his mother. She was French, a lady of great merit. My wife was a friend of hers. I knew Lazarus Just, but not intimately, in Spain and in France about the year 68. A man very intelligent and fortunate in minds, and with no little luck, they say, too, in love affairs. He was a man who caused talk. In this he was not like his son, who is correctness itself. You may well say that you have drawn the prize of a husband, the most worthy and the finest, head of a giant, heart of a child. And having all that, he is the possessor of a good fortune, that which his father left him, and the recent inheritance from his French uncle. What more could you wish? I should answer, child, there is nothing more. Electra sighing deeply. Oh, alas! And now tell me, Marquis, can I be tranquil? Absolutely. And have I nothing to fear from the two persons who— You already know that they think they have an authority. They may bother you some, perhaps, but we shall teach them their place. And Cuesta? He is the least to be feared. I have talked with him to-day, and I trust he will end by helping us. And Pontejo? He will grumble. He will give us a few headaches if we let him. He will blow the biblical trumpet to frighten us, but don't pay any attention to him. Really? He can do nothing, absolutely nothing. And if I find him here, I should not be frightened. Why should you be frightened by the monotonous buzzing of a gadfly that goes and comes, circles and turns? Oh, what a satisfaction to my poor mind. With affectionate enthusiasm. Marquis of Ronda, may God bless you. Marquis, very affectionately. My poor girl, God will be with you. Scene 4. The same. Don Urbano, who comes from the house with hat on. Marquis, God be with you. May I speak with you, my dear Urbano? Would it be just as well after Mass? To Electra. But, child, you are so quiet. The bells are ringing already. I have only to put on my hat. A half minute, uncle. Enters hurriedly into the house. Let us settle the day of the wedding, and draw up the act of consent. It would be better to talk about that with Evarista. But, my friend, the time has come for you to put up a bold front to certain interferences that annul the authority of the head of the family. My dear Marquis, ask me to change completely, to overturn the planetary system, to take the stars from the heavens, but do not ask me to oppose the opinions of my wife. Man, don't show such submissiveness. I insist that I should discuss this matter with you, and not with Evarista. Come with us to Mass, and we will talk about it. All right, I will go. Scene 5. The same. Electra, Evarista, Pantoja. Electra with hat, gloves, and prayer book. Here I am. Come on, the Marquis is going with us. Evarista, entering at the left in the rear, followed by Pantoja. Go on, quickly. Quickly, if you want to get in there on time. Will you come back, Marquis? Oh, certainly, without fail. Goodbye. Electra, the Marquis, and Don Urbano exit at rear. Scene 6. Evarista, Pantoja, who in an attitude of great fatigue throws himself on the bench in the left foreground. Shall we go into the house? No, let me get my breath. In the church I almost stifled the heat, the crowd. I will have them bring you some refreshment. Balbina! No, I thank you. A cup of lime tea? No, thanks. Enters Balbina. Her mistress gives her her mantilla, which she has just taken off, and her prayer book, and sends her away. 
there is no reason my friend for such dejection it is not my pride as they say that is wounded it is something more delicate and deeper there is denied me the consolation the glory of guiding this poor girl and leading her along the paths of righteousness and it afflicts me more that you so in sympathy with my ideas you in whom i saw a faithful friend and a fervent ally abandon me at the critical hour <laughs> pardon me don salvador i do not abandon you we were agreed to keep her i do not say shut her up this crazy girl in san jose de la penitencia watching over her discipline and purification but there has arisen unexpectedly the inconceivable caprice of maximo and i cannot i cannot in any way refuse my consent it would be a piece of folly and it does not concern me <laughs> but of maximo as a man of good conduct what have you to say nothing correcting himself oh yes i might say something but for the moment i shall say only that electra is not prepared for matrimony nor in a state to choose properly i do not oppose absolutely her marriage provided it be with a man whose ideas cannot hurt her but i will come to this later the first thing is that this tender creature should enter the convent where we shall test her we shall try with extreme tact her character her tastes her affections and in view of what we shall determine it can be decided with haughtiness what have you to say Evarista intimidated that for this plan very fine i admit i cannot offer you my cooperation pantoja with arrogance walking up and down so according to you dona evarista if the girl wishes to be lost let her be lost if she insists on her own damnation let her be damned quickly evarista with greater timidity as if under a spell her ruin <laughs> and how can i help it is it in my hands pantoja with energy it is oh no no i lack the courage to interfere and with what right impossible don salvador impossible pantoja asserting more and more his authority you must know my friend that the act of separating electra from a world in which innumerable malignant beasts surround her and threaten her is not despotism it is love in the purest expression of maternal affection which often hurts in order to heal do you doubt that the great aim of my life to-day is the welfare of the poor girl evarista more and more intimidated i do not doubt it i, I cannot doubt it pantoja with effusion and eloquence i love electra with a love so intense that all the subtleties of human speech would not suffice to declare it when my eyes saw her the voice of blood cried out with me saying that this creature belonged to me i wish and i ought to have her under my sacred and paternal rule that she may love me as the angels love that she should be my image in conduct my reflection in ideas that she should recognize her duty to suffer for those who gave her life, and purifying should help us who were wicked to obtain pardon. For God's sake, do you not understand me? Evarista overcome. Yes, yes, and how I admire your powerful intellect. I prefer less admiration and more efficiency in my favor. I cannot. <laughs> sits down weeping and depressed naturally electra cannot inspire in you the great interest that she does in me using suave means of persuasion if at first the separation of the girl from worldly pleasures would cause her sorrow it would soon bring her peace and happy calm i shall endow her amply all that i possess will be hers for the splendour of her holy house electra will be named mother superior and under my authority will govern the congregation with deep emotion how happy she will be and i so happy remains as in a state of exultation 
i understand indeed that by not acceding to what you ask me i deprive this creature of reaching the highest state of human perfection you well know my sentiments with what pleasure i would exchange the wealth in which i live for the glory of directing obscurely a religious house with much work and humility i always admire you for your protection of la penitentia i admire you more when i know that you redoubled your aid when my poor eleutheria transfixed with sorrow like a new magdalene was seeking in this institution peace and pardon in your act i saw the most pure spirituality yes when your unhappy cousin entered that house my protection was not only more positive but more spiritual i never saw eleutheria after she was converted since she never allowed herself to be seen by any one, not even by me. But I went daily to the church and conversed in spirit with the penitent, considering her regenerated, as indeed she was. The unhappy one died at the age of forty-five. I asked permission to bury her in the interior of the edifice, and since then I have protected more the congregation. I have made it entirely mine because in it rested the remains of her whom I loved. And now he whom we may call the founder visits the holy house every day without missing one, and the humble and poetic cemetery where the deceased sisters rest. Panto her with vivacity. Do you know about it? I do, and walks around the flowered patio in the shade of the cypresses and oleanders. That is true. And how did you know? the founder walks and wanders about praying for himself and for the poor sinner imploring for her rest and his own oh yes there will rest my poor bones too with great vehemence i wish moreover that just as my spirit may not leave that house in it may reside also as long as there be need the spirit of electra i shall not force her to the life of the cloister but if after trying it she should find enjoyment in the beautiful life and should wish to remain in it i should believe that god had granted to me the most ineffable of favours oh what a beautiful end what grandeur and what joy avarista with lively emotion grandeur indeed incomparable idealism do you still doubt that my ends are high that no insane passion moves me how should i doubt that then if my plan seems to you a good one why will you not help me because i haven't the strength to do so not even giving the assurance that the seclusion of the girl will have the nature of a trial not even so no don salvador do not count on me <laughs> struggling with her conscience i recognize the grandeur the beauty of your ideas i sympathize with them i feel the echo of such ideas in my own heart but i also owe something to the social life and in the social and family life what you wish is impossible Bantoha, hiding his vexation very well patience petulant and gloomy he walks up and down evarista after a pause what do you think that i shall yield pantoja with naturalness and firmness no madam then how i don't know an idea will come to me i shall see making a resolution evarista will you do me the favour to write a letter to the mother superior of la penitencia saying to her that she should come here at once with two sisters why don't you write because I must hurry elsewhere. And it must be soon? At once. All right. Turns to the house. Send the letter without loss of time. Evarista looking towards the garden. It seems to me they are coming. Quickly, my friend. I am going. God inspire us all. Enters the house. I shall be with you. Aside. I do not want them to see me hides himself behind the bushes at the right near to the staircase scene seven pantoja hidden electra don urbano the marquis who returned from mass patrus who comes out of the house electra approaching meets patrus at the foot of the staircase has he come 
no miss there is heard the distant singing of children playing in the garden i am dying of impatience takes off her hat and gloves and gives them with a prayer book to patros i shall wait there playing with the children first i shall pick some flowers don urbano to patros your mistress in the house sir let us go there you first marquis they enter the house after them patros electra admiring the flowers she has picked how pretty how graceful this clematis pantoja comes out she is frightened at seeing him scene eight electra pantoja my daughter are you frightened at me alas yes i cannot help it and i ought not to be no excuse me don salvador i am going to play with the children wait a moment are you going to let the little ones communicate to you their joy no sir i am going to communicate mine to them for i have an abundance of it the singing of the children dies away i know already the cause of your great joy i know it already well if you know it there is nothing more to say good-bye don salvador pantoja detaining her ungrateful one grant me a moment just a moment no more all right sits down on the stone bench puts the flowers to one side and goes on picking them to decorate herself with them fastening them in her hair i do not know why you keep up such a reserve with me knowing how much your existence and your happiness interest me electra without looking at him busy fastening the flowers well if my happiness interests you rejoice with me i am very happy happy to-day and to-morrow to-morrow more so and always more and more so true and constant happiness the indestructible joy exists only in eternal love superior to human inquietudes and miseries electra having decorated her hair puts flowers in her dress are you playing again on the same key about my being an angel i am very worldly don salvador god made me a woman since he put me on earth and not in heaven there are angels on earth too they are angels who in the midst of the disorders of the world know how to live the life of the spirit electra displaying herself decorated with flowers hears again nearer the singing of the children how is it do i seem an angel you always seem so i wish you were this is the way I decorate myself to amuse the children, if you could just see how they laugh. With a sudden sad thought. Do you know what I look like now? Well, a dead child. This is the way they decorate the dead children when they bury them. In order to symbolize the ideal beauty of the heaven to which they have gone. Electra taking off the flowers. No, no, I don't want to look like a dead child. I might imagine you were taking me to the tomb. I don't want to bury you i should like to surround you with light the song of the children dies away again and stops they put lights on the dead children too i don't wish your death but your life not an uneasy and vulgar life but sweet free high loving with eternal and pure love electra confused and why do you wish all this for me because i love you with a love of a kind above all human loves I shall make you understand better the greatness of this affection by telling you that to avoid for you a slight suffering, I would take upon myself the most horrible anguish you can imagine. Electra, stupefied, without hearing well. That is self-abnegation. Consider how much I shall suffer, since I cannot keep from you a sorrow, a grief. From me? From you. A sorrow? A sorrow which afflicts me the more since i have been the cause of it electra rebelling rises sorrows no i do not wish them keep them for yourself bring me nothing but joys pantoja sympathetically would that i could but it cannot be oh, now i am frightened with a sudden idea that calms her ah now i understand poor don salvador you want to tell me something bad about maximo something you think bad from your standard and that according to mine is not don't trouble i shall not believe it hurrying her speech without giving pantoja time to reply 
maximo is the best man in the world the first and i detest any one who says a word to me contrary to this fact i detest him for heaven's sake let me speak don't be so hasty my daughter i do not speak evil of any one not even of those that hate me maximo is good industrious most intelligent what more do you want electra pleased that's it that's it i will say more i will say that you may love him that it is your duty to love him electra with great satisfaction ah and to love him with all your heart pause he is not to blame no to blame alarmed again come are you going to end by telling something naughty about him about him no well about whom remembering ah i know that the father of maximo and you were terrible enemies they have also told me that this gentleman so honourable in business was somewhat wild you understand me but this has nothing to do with me most innocent creature you don't know what you are saying i say that that excellent man lazarus you stay yes in naming him i have to associate his memory with that of a person who no longer exists very dear to you electra understanding and not wishing to understand to me a person who no longer exists very dear to you pause they look at each other electra in terror with scarcely audible voice my mother pantoja makes an affirmative sign with his head my mother astonished desiring but fearing the explanation the day of pardon has come let us pardon electra indignant my mother my poor mother they do not name her except to dishonour her furious i should like to have them in my hand to tear them to pieces to destroy them and not leave a single piece of them oh alas for me i ought not no i ought not to have spoken to you of this what would i give to have kept silent to have hidden it from you all the days of my life my affection commands me to speak electra anxiously and i shall have to listen i have said that lazarus you stay electra covering her ears i don't want to hear it your mother was then just about the age you are now eighteen years electra angry and rebelling i don't believe it i don't believe anything i don't believe she was a charming young woman electra rebelling more energetically be still i don't believe anything i don't believe pantoja sorrowfully my dear daughter turn your eyes to god electra upset i am dreaming all that i see is a lie illusion looking here and there with frightened eyes lies are these trees this house that sky you you do not exist it is a monstrous nightmare beating her head wake up unhappy woman wake up pantoja trying to calm her electra my dear child innocent soul electra with cries from her heart mother my mother the truth tell me the truth out of her head running about the stage where are you mother i wish death or the truth mother come to me mother mother runs quickly from the stage and is lost in the distant foliage soon there sounds again the singing of the children at play scene nine pantoja don urbano the marquis from the house quickly after them balbina and patros what has happened we heard electra crying out and she went running through the garden this way alarmed both rush out and disappear in the garden marquis looking through the bushes there she goes she is running and keeps on crying oh my dear child rushes into the garden what is this i will explain it to you wait let us arrange now what pantoja trying to arrange his ideas let me think it will be necessary to bring her to the house come don urbano looking towards the garden maximo is coming pantoja vexed oh how inopportunely the children are running to him it appears they are telling him about it electra is going towards the grotto maximo is going after the girl 
Electra flees from him. The Marquis and my nephew are talking heatedly. Come, be careful that Maximo does not interfere. I am going. Goes into the garden. I fear some opposition. If I could... Wishing to go, but not daring. Balbina, returning hurriedly from the garden. Poor girl, calling for her mother. She has seated herself in the mouth of the grotto, surrounded by the children. And no one can move her from there. And Maximo? Feel it with consternation like the rest of us. For we do not understand. I'm going to tell my mistress. No, no. Have the mother superior and the sisters come? They are here. Do not say anything to your mistress. Go into the house and await my orders. All right, sir. Pantoja, undecided and as if frightened. For the first time in my life I cannot seem to come to a decision. I shall go there. At the entrance to the garden? No. Shall I wait? Making a resolve. I am going. A few steps away, Maximo stops him, coming very agitated and angry from the garden. Scene 10. Pantoja, Maximo. Maximo, speaking heatedly throughout the scene. Stop. The Marquis tells me that after a long conversation with you, Electra went out from here in this terrible delirium. Pantoja, disturbed. Here. Certainly. We were talking. The girl. Bitten by the monster. Perhaps. But the monster is not I. It is a terrible monster that feeds itself on human acts. It is called history. Wishing to leave. Farewell. Maximo, seizing him firmly by the arm. Stop. You are going to repeat now, right now, that which this monster of history told her to put her in such a state. Pantoja, not knowing what to say. I, first of all, it is necessary to establish first that... I don't wish any preambles. The truth, concrete, precise, exact. You have offended Electra. You have upset her reason. With what words? With what ideas? I must know it quickly, quickly. It concerns a woman who is all the world to me. To me she is more. She is both heaven and earth. Let me know at once the machinery you have set in motion against this poor orphan, against me, against us both, united now forever by the fusion of our souls. Let me know what poison you have put into the ear of her whom I can and ought to call already my wife. Pantoja makes signs of doubt. What are you saying? That she will not be my wife? And you even jest. I have said nothing. Maximo, breaking out in a rage, attacks him with great violence. Well, by that silence, by that jest, mask of an egotism so great that the world cannot hold it, by that virtue, true or false, I know not, which in the shadow and without noise hurls the dart that annihilates us, seizes him by the collar and hurls him on the bench. And by that mildness that poisons, by that suavity that poisons, may God confound you, great man or humble, eagle, snake, whatever you may be. Pantoja, recovering his breath. What brutality! Infamous one! Madman! I? Yes, I am. You drive us all mad. Recovering from his rage. Who but you has had the diabolical power to take away the strength of my character, driving me to this terrible anger? Without considering it, I have crushed a weak and mean being, incapable of replying to force with force. Pantoja sitting up. I shall reply with force. Returning to his normal state, expresses himself with a sententious calmness. You are physical force, I am spiritual force. Maximo looks at him, astonished and confused. I can do more than you, infinitely more. Do you doubt it? What more can you do? Wrath stifles you, pride blinds you. I, ill-treated and mocked, recover easily my serenity. You know, you tremble, Maximo. You who are force, you tremble. I am still trembling with rage. Do not provoke it. Pantoja, this time master of himself. I shall neither provoke it, nor do I fear it. Because you ill-treat me, I forgive you. 
Forgive me. Me? Better insist that I should be a murderer, and you will succeed. Pantoja, with serene and cold gravity, without boasting. Get angry. Cry out. Strike. Here I am immovable. There is no human force that can move me, no power that can separate me from my course. Injure me, wound me, kill me. I shall not defend myself. Barbarism may destroy my poor body, which is worth nothing. But that which is here, to his mind, who can destroy it? And if, perchance, my will should be annihilated by death, the idea which I maintain will always remain alive, triumphant. I do not see, I cannot see, great ideas in one who does not have greatness, in one who has no pity, tenderness, nor compassion. My ends are very high. I go towards them, by any means possible. Maximo terrified. By any means possible? Towards God there is but one way to go, the right way. With exultation. O oh God, thou canst not permit that one should reach thy kingdom through dark byways, nor that one should reach thy glory trampling on the hearts of those who love. No, God, thou wilt not permit that, no, no. Rather than see a thing so absurd, let us see all nature in ruin and all the machinery of the universe broken. Sacrilege! You offend God with your words. And you offend him more with your acts. Enough! I shall not argue with you. I have nothing more to say to you. Nothing more? You have said nothing. Takes him vigorously by the arm. Now go with me in search of Electra, and in her presence either clear up my doubts, and relieve me of this terrible anxiety, or you perish, and I perish, and we all shall perish. I swear it by the memory of my mother. Pantoja, after looking at him fixedly, Let us go. They take a few steps, and Evarista comes out of the house. Scene 11. The same, Evarista. After her, the mother superior, and two sisters of La Penitencia. Afterwards, Patros. What has happened, Maximo? I heard your voice angry. This man. Come, come, aunt. The mother superior and the sisters appear. He is alarmed at seeing them. Oh, those women! Patras enters hastily from the garden. Patras suffering and weeping. Mistress, the young lady has lost her reason. She's running about, fleeing, calling on her mother. She neither sees nor hears those who wish to calm her. Evarista advancing towards the garden. My darling child! Maximo looking towards the garden. Now she is coming. Releases Pantoja and rushes out. The master and the marquis have succeeded in quieting her, and are almost dragging her. Electra appears, led by Don Urbano and the marquis, beside them Maximo. On seeing the persons on the stage, she makes some resistance. Gently and affectionately they force her to approach. She has her hair and her bosom decorated with flowers. Scene 12. Electra, Maximo, Evarista, Pantoja, Don Urbano, the Marquis, Patras, the Mother Superior, and the two sisters. My daughter, what delirium is this? Maximo, hastening to her affectionately. My dear one, come, listen to me. My affection will be your reason. Electra, getting away from Maximo with a movement of modesty. Her delirium is calmed, no cries, no bursts of laughter. She speaks with accents of resigned and melancholy grief. Do not come near me. I am not yours. No, no. Why do you flee from me? Where are you going without me? Pandora, who has passed to the right, to Electra's side. To truth, to eternal peace. I am looking for my mother. Do you know where my mother is? I saw her in the midst of the children's game. She went afterwards towards the mimosa at the mouth of the grotto. She was looking at me and fleeing. The song of the children is heard in the distance. Do you see Maximo? He will be your husband. Maximo with eagerness. Nobody opposes it. There is no reason nor force to prevent it, Electra, my darling. Electra imposing silence. 
now there is no question of wives nor husbands oh how sad my heart is now there are only fathers and brothers many brothers how large is the world and how lonesome it is how empty over it pass black clouds the illusions that were mine and now are no one's there are the illusions of no one what solitude everything is extinguished every one weeps the world is ending is ending with an outburst of fear i wish to flee i wish to hide myself i do not wish fathers i do not wish brothers i want to go with my mother where is your tomb there both of us together my mother and i i shall tell her my sorrows and she shall tell me the truth the truth pantoja aside to evarista it is the opportunity let us take advantage of it my daughter we shall take you to peace to rest that is not peace rest and reason are here electra is mine evarista starts to take her away i claim her maximo farewell i do not belong to you i belong to my sorrow my mother calls me to her side anxiously expressing an intense emotion i hear her voice her voice silence she calls me she calls me with joy and delirium daughter come to your senses do you hear i am coming mother runs after the two sisters let us go to maximo who wishes to follow her i alone she calls me alone you no me alone do you not hear the voice which says electra i am coming to you my dear mother the sisters evarista and pantoja surround her iniquity to rob me of her they have deprived her of her reason he tries to release himself from the arms of the marquis and don urbano do not lose yours too restraining himself calm let us go now we shall recover her ah as if stifled take me back to truth take me back to science this uncertain lying world is not for me end of act four Act Five of Electra by Benito Perez Galdos, translated by Charles Alfred Jurel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Short Curtain, Locutory in San Jose de la Penitencia, Lateral Doors in the Back a window through which the patio is seen scene one evarista sister dorotea evarista entering with a nun don salvador he came a while ago he is in the office with the mother superior and the sister treasurer Erbano will find him there while they are talking there sister dorotea tell me what the girl does thinks and says the selection of yourself so sweet and gentle to accompany her constantly and to be her friend and confidant in this solitude has been very fortunate electra honours me with her affection and i do not contribute little it is true to calm her disturbed soul evarista pointing to her forehead and how is uh... very well madam her reason has recovered its clearness and she would be entirely over the derangement if she did not always have the fixed idea of wanting to see her mother to talk with her and to hope from her the solution of her doubts and her ignorance all the time that she is free from her religious duties and some time that she takes from them she spends in the patio where we have our cemetery and in the garden near by there as in our room the idea of her mother absorbs her whole mind tell me something else does she remember maximo does she still think of him yes madam but in prayer and meditation her thought cultivates the idea of loving him as a brother and in the end as she told me to-day she hopes to succeed her thoughts it is necessary that the heart should respond to this idea everything would result very well according to our plans if it were not for the unfortunate occurrence of the day before yesterday which upsets things somewhat an unfortunate occurrence our good friend don leonardo questo the broker died i did not know 
a great misfortune. A few days ago he did not feel very well. He foresaw his end. Monday he went out early, and in the street he lost consciousness. They took him to his house, and he died at three in the afternoon. Poor man. In his will, Leonardo makes Electra the heiress of the half of his fortune. Ah. But with the express condition that the child must abandon the religious life. Do you know whether Don Salvador is informed of these things? I suppose, since he knows everything, and what he doesn't know he guesses. <laughs> that is so. Dorotea, seeing Don Urbano coming. Don Urbano. Scene two. The same, Don Urbano. Have you seen him? Yes, I have left him working in his office, with a skill, with a fixedness of attention that would astonish you. Such a head. Has he heard of Cuesta's last will? Yes. Evarista to Don Urbano. Did you find our friend much vexed? If he is, no one knows it. His strength of will is such that even in the most distressing conditions he shows in his face the emotion of his great soul. Evarista interrupting him. Indeed, he dominates over human weaknesses, and, like an eagle, rises higher and higher above where the storms break. When I asked him concerning his hope of retaining Electra, he replied with more calmness than boasting, I trust in God. What grandeur of soul! And did he know that the Marquis and Maximo are the executors? He knew more. He received at noon a letter from them announcing that they would come this afternoon, accompanied by a notary, to ask the girl whether she would accept or refuse the inheritance. And in the face of this communication? Nothing. The man is so tranquil, repeating the formula which describes him at one stroke, I trust in God. Scene three, the same, Maximo, the Marquis at the left. We shall wait here. Maximo, seeing Evarista. Ah, whom have we here? Aunt. Salutes her with affection, Evarista replying to the salute of the Marquis. A Marquis. So after all, there are hopes of winning the battle? I don't know. We are struggling with a wild beast of much sagacity. And you, Maximo, do you think? That the monster knows much, and is a consummate master in these struggles. But I trust in God. <laughs> you? You? Naturally, one who loves truth trusts in God. It is for truth that we are fighting. How can we believe that God will abandon us? It cannot be, aunt. In passing through the patios, have you seen Electra? No. Dorotea at the window. Come in now. She's coming from the cemetery. Maximo going to the window with Don Urbano. Ah, how sad, how beautiful. The whiteness of her habit makes her look like an apparition. Calling to her. Electra. Silence. I cannot contain myself. Looks at her again. But is she living? Is she in her beautiful reality, or is she an image worthy of the altar? Now she is coming back. She lifts her eyes to heaven. If I saw her vanish in the air like a shadow, I should not be surprised. She lowers her eyes. She stops. Of what is she thinking? Continues looking at Electra, Marquis, who has remained in the proscenium with Evarista. Yes, madam. False, with entire falsehood. Be careful what you are saying. Either the venerable Don Salvador is mistaken, or he has told voluntarily the contrary of the truth, moved by reasons and aims to which our limited intelligence cannot reach. Impossible, Marquis. A man so righteous, of such high ideals, failing in the truth. And who can assure you, madam, that in the depths of these exalted consciousnesses there is not a moral law whose subtleties are far beyond us. There are absurdities in the life of the spirit, as well as in nature, where we see a thousand phenomena whose causes are not what they seem to be. Oh, it cannot be. No, no, no. There are cases in which lying smooths over the paths of goodness, but have we a case of this kind? No, no. In order that you may form a judgment, 
listen to what I have to say. Virginia assures me that this man here is the child of Josefina Pere, and she knows it without any mystification or deception. And she proves it as the most clear and simple problem. Moreover, I am able to prove that Lazarus Just was not in Madrid between the years 63 and 66. Anyway, Marquis, I cannot get it into my head. Marquis, seeing Pantoja appear at the right. Here he is. Maximo, returning to the front of the stage. The beast is here. With permission, I will retire. Exit to the left. Pantoja remains a moment at the door. Scene 4. Evarista, Maximo, Don Urbano, the Marquis, Pantoja. Pantoja advancing slowly. Pardon me if I have kept you waiting. Sir Pantoja, being informed of the object of our visit, it is not necessary to repeat it. Marquis, kindly. We do not repeat it in order not to mortify you, for you will now give the battle up as lost. Pantoja, serenely, without boastfulness. I never lose. That is saying a great deal. And I am certain that Electra knows now how to scorn worldly goods and will not accept the inheritance. Maximo, restraining his wrath. Oh? So you see, this man does not surrender. I do not surrender. Never. Never. So I see. Not able to contain himself. He must be killed. Let death come. We shall not go as far as that. Go as far as you like. You will always find me at my post, immovable. We trust in the law. I trust in God. The law is God, or ought to be. Ah, gentlemen of the law, I tell you that Electra, adapting herself easily to this life of purity, fond now of prayer and of sweet religious peace, does not desire at all to leave this house. Maximo, impatiently. Shall we be able to see her? Not just now. Maximo, wishing to protest angrily. Oh! Be calm. I cannot. It is the choir hour. Don Salvador means that after prayers... Exactly. And in order that you may be convinced that I have no fear, you may bring not only the notary, but the congressional deputy, if you like. I shall have the doors of the building open. I shall allow you to talk as long as you like with Electra, and if she wishes to leave, let her leave quickly. You will do as you say? Why not, since I trust in God? Maximo and Pantoja look at each other in silence. And I, too. Well, if you trust, here I await you. We shall return this afternoon. Takes Maximo by the arm. And we to the church. Exeunt Don Urbano, Evarista, Pantoja. Scene 5. The Marquis, Maximo, who goes agitated about the stage, impatient and distrustful. What do you say to this? That this man of superior talent in charming the weak and jesting with the strong will drive us all mad. I am not built that way. In struggles of this kind, will against will, I feel myself drawn to violence. What would you do, then? Take her away willingly or by force. If I haven't enough strength, look for it, acquire it, buy it. Bring friends, accomplices, a squadron, an army. With increasing heat... The romantic ages and the ferocities of feudalism are reborn within me. And a man of science thinks and talks like that? Extremes meet. More excited. This man, this monster, it is necessary to kill him. Not quite, my son. Let us imitate him. Let us be as cunning, as insidious, as persevering. Maximo with eloquence. Let us be as I am, sincere, brave, valiant. Let us meet the enemy with a bold face. Let us destroy him if we can, or let ourselves be destroyed by him. But all at once, in a single action, in a single onslaught, at one stroke. Either him or us. No, my friend, no. We have to go with a steady hand. 
it is necessary for us to respect the social order in which we live and this social order in which we live will involve us in a network of lies and evasions and in this net we shall perish drowned with no defence our hands and our necks caught in the meshes of a thousand and one legal caprices of a thousand and one false corrupt intentions be calm let us prepare for that which awaits us this afternoon let us anticipate the obstacles in order that we may plan how to conquer them what will happen when we tell electra that you and she are not brother and sister what do you suppose will happen why she will not believe us for in her mind the error has been fixed and it will be impossible to destroy it don't you know what continual suggestion can do what the atmosphere of this house can do with the ideas of those who live in it let us use then efficient means maximo with greater violence efficient yes set fire to the house set fire to madrid no nonsense in case the child does not wish to leave we shall take her by force maximo excited to the end either conquering force or conquering despair i shall die she will die we shall all die die no let us live wide awake let us prepare for the worst i have the keys to get into the new street sister dorothea is on our side hush on to violence astuteness cunning by the straight road by the indirect road taking his arm and let us go for our presence here may arouse suspicions taking him away let us go yes trust in me i trust in god change of scene patio in san jose de la penitencia at the right the side of a church with windows through which the light comes at the left a door leading to another patio which communicates with a street in the background between the church and the buildings on the left a great arch through which one can see the border of the cemetery of the congregation dark night scene six electra dorothea as certain as that it is night two gentlemen have come to the house with the proposition to take you out into the world don't you believe it two gentlemen before you tell me their names my heart guesses them maximo and the marquis of ronda if it is true that they wish to take me with them they disturb me very much when i came into this holy house i began as you know the great battle with my spirit i have tried with the help of god to change into brotherly love the love of a very different kind that fills my heart that fire of the sun having been kindled in my heart with such violence it is not an easy task to change it into the cool light of the moon but in the end by continual meditation the dismay of my heart and the sweet ideas that god has sent me have given me strength to conquer in the battle my sister if you feel in you the strength of the new love why do you fear to see maximo because seeing him i think that all the ground gained will be lost in a single moment dorothea incredulously and are you sure that you have gained this ground oh yes some not much yet i understand my dear sister that seeing the person will help you to prove it if indeed you can electra with vivacity oh don't say it as i am to-day in the beginning of this struggle my conscience would not have a moment's peace by his side oh my god i am struggling with two impossibilities i cannot love him as a brother and i cannot love him as a husband terrified what torture in the world no i prefer to be here in this solitude of death in this laboratory of my soul and by this divine crucible in which i am fusing a new being do not hope electra that your own ideas will give you peace trust in god and in those whom god sends you with resolution my sister do not tremble before him whom you believe your brother some one perhaps will deny that he is electra very excited be still be still in an affair so delicate every word that does not bring me certainty is a cruel word which does not calm me but drives me crazy my god give me the truth or give me death calm yourself electra more excited all the confusion i had when i came here is coming back again angels and demons are struggling in my thoughts leave me i wish to flee from myself goes up and down on the stage in great agitation sister dorothea goes after her and tries to calm her 
Calm yourself. Do. My dear sister, your torments are near the end. Looks anxiously towards the door on the left. Electra, thinking she hears voices in the distance. Listen. My mother calls me. Do not become delirious. Other voices, voices of living persons, will call you. It is my mother. Silence. Listening. Enter Pantoja at the left. Scene 7. Electra, Pantoja, Dorothea. My daughter, how did you get out of the church without my seeing you? We went out to get some fresh air. Electra was stifling. Aside. The hour approaches. God will help us. My daughter, do you not feel well? Electra, in a fearful voice. My mother is calling me. Pantoja, taking her hand affectionately. The sweet voice of your mother, speaking to you in the spirit, will comfort you, will bind you with bonds of piety and love to this holy house. The choir of novices is heard in the church. Listen, my daughter. These voices of the angels which are calling to you from heaven. Electra delirious. It is the song of the choir. Between these tender voices there rises that of my mother, calling me to her tomb. It is an hallucination. It is the voice of the heavenly angels. There are no angels. No, no. I hear my name. I hear the voices of the choir which stirs my whole soul. They are the sons of men who rejoice in life. She continues to hear the voices of the choir. Pantoja uneasily. Sister Dorothea. Tell the sister custodian that she should watch the door of the new street, and that of Ronda Street. I will, sir. No, I will go. I trust no one. I wish to watch the doors, all the patios and corners of the building. Alarmed, thinking he hears a noise. Silence. Don't you hear? What? Nothing, sir. It is fear. Thought I heard the sound of voices. Knocks at some door down below. Listens. In what direction? Looking towards the rear behind the church. In the direction of the infirmary. Oh, I have no peace. I wish to see for myself. Electra, go back to the church. Sister, you take her. They are waiting for me there. Hurrying them. Quick. Takes them to the door of the church. Goes quickly and uneasily. Dorothea sees him leave, takes Electra's hand, and returns with her to the centre of the stage. Electra, as if powerless, lets herself be led. Scene 8. Electra, Dorothea. They are coming, not to the church, though. Here, I want to get my breath. I want to live. Dorothea, aside, uneasy. This is the hour set for the Marquis. Let us take advantage of the minutes, of the seconds, or all will be lost. Looking to the left. I am going to open their way to this patio. Aloud. Sister, wait for me here. Electra, frightened. Where are you going? Seizes her hand. Dorothea, decisively. To look out for you. To return to you your health and life. To arrange for you to leave this tomb and to take me with you. Electra, trembling. Sister, do not leave me. This moment will decide your fate. You will return to the world. You will see Maximo. When? Now. You will see him enter here. Pointing to the left. Silence. Courage. Do not stop me. Do not move from here. Goes quickly out at the left. Oh, my God, Holy Virgin, is it true that... Here! He is coming here! Thinks she sees Maximo in the darkness. Ah, it is he, Maximo. Speaking as in a dream, she moves away from what she thinks is a real being. Away from me. Leave me. I cannot love you as a brother. I cannot. In the fire is the crucible in which I wished to fuse a new heart. Don't you see that I cannot look at you? Why are you looking at me? Do not take me out into the world. Here I am seeking truth. My mother is calling me. With accents of despair. Mother! Mother! turns her face to the rear. As the last words of Electra are spoken, there appears the shade of Eleutheria, a beautiful figure dressed as a nun. Electra, her back to the audience, with her arms crossed, looks at her. Oh! 
a long pause scene nine electra the shade of eleutheria which is seen vaguely in the darkness in the background electra advances towards it the figures remain facing each other as near as possible i am your mother and i come to calm the anxieties of your loving heart my voice will give back peace to your conscience no bond of nature unites you to the man you have chosen for a husband that which you heard was an invention dictated by affection to bring you into our company and to the peace of this holy house oh mother what consolation you give me i am telling you the truth and i give it strength and hope except my daughter as a test of the temple of your heart this transitory seclusion and do not bear ill will to those who brought you here if marital love and the pleasures of the family call your soul allow yourself to leave this sweet attraction and do not pretend to a holiness you cannot attain god is in all parts i do not know how to find him outside of here seek him in the world along paths better than were mine and the shade is silent and disappears as the voice of maximo is heard last scene electra maximo the marquis dorothea pantoja maximo in the door electra electra running towards him ah pantoja at the right my daughter where are you here with us she is ours are you running away from me no she is not running away she has come to life end of act five end of electra by benito perez galdos translated by charles alfred urell